Hello, everyone, and welcome to Columbus River Dragons Hockey. I'm Tom Callahan. Thanks for joining me here as we're getting ready to go this evening. The River Dragons here in Winston-Salem at the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds Arena as it was recently rechristened, and we just found this out uh, just before our broadcast a couple of weeks ago. It is no longer the Fairgrounds Annex. It is now the Fairgrounds Arena. So the Annex was annexed, uh, and you know what? We'll roll with it. Mid-season changes. We can do it. We're at the end of the regular season. Can you believe it? The final weekend of the regular season is upon us. We have made it, River Dragons fans. Not only have we made it, but we've arrived in style. We've rolled up in the limo, and the River Dragons are a first-place hockey team. They have wrapped up the division. They have wrapped up the league, and Columbus tonight and now through the weekend wrapping up this regular season where – couple of things I think they're interested in doing, trying to get things back together for themselves, but still resting some players, still getting some other guys some looks. Um, a couple of lineup juggles here tonight, and we're going to tell you about those as we work our way through our Air Force Heating and Air pregame show, plus an addition and a name that uh, you may remember from last season. Back to play with the River Dragons here on the weekend as well. So there is plenty for us to talk about here, but as we take a look at the records... Between these two teams, Columbus coming into this one here today with a 39-7-3-3-1 mark. They have the chance to be the only team in the league this year to get to 40 regulation wins. If they win any of the next three games in regulation, they will be the only team in the league that hits that 40 win in regulation mark. Everybody else does not have enough games remaining to be able to do that. In fact, only three teams even crack 30, Columbus, Carolina, and Binghamton. But the River Dragons, 128 points, tremendous season, an 805 win percentage, plus 127 on the goal differential, and uh, coming in 7 and 3 in the last 10 games. It's been a little bit of a bumpy road down the stretch for the River Dragons. They haven't executed exactly everything they've wanted to. However, they're in a place right now where uh, knowing that you're trying to heal some bumps and bruises, you're trying to keep some guys fresh, make sure the legs uh, can be extended through the playoffs. And I'll tell you what, it jumps up a notch when you get into the postseason. But playing against Carolina, you know the rivalry always brings out the best in these two teams. It uh, really gets the juices flowing between these two. And Carolina right behind the River Dragons in the Continental, 32-11, 3-4-3, 113 points, plus 86 goal differential. They're 9-0-1 in the last 10. That's the best mark in the last 10 of anybody in the FPHL. So clearly the uh, Thunderbirds have been playing some pretty good hockey here down the stretch. It was interesting initially the discussion this morning at Morning Skate, and yes, the River Dragons did get here in time to skate this morning, was with a focus towards the Thunderbirds wanting to get as many points as they can. They're going with their full lineup. They're not resting anybody heading into the weekend. But the thought behind that being that perhaps they could catch Binghamton points-wise, and if Carolina managed to get past Columbus and end up back in the final against Binghamton, if that were the case, they could have home ice advantage. Well, just before we got on the air here in the pregame show, we learned that actually the uh, Coliseum has already said they're going to take the ice out of this building anyway. Uh, when it comes to the first week of the final. So Thunderbirds should only be able to play at home and have a game here with well, the first week, so probably with the first two, I imagine, would have to be at home. And uh, for them, I mean, that's, that's kind of an interesting setup and a little disappointing, I think. What do you have to play for now? Uh, you know, it's... A, Maybe you still get home ice, but would you have to wedge in three games in four days or something like that in order to do it? And uh, because it can be a best of five, then the other team doesn't get games at home. If it does only last three, which isn't always popular with ownership groups. So the Thunderbirds, if they do make it that far, uh, and they did last year, and certainly the River Dragons are just bent on stopping them from making it that far this year, but uh, they would not have ice uh, past the first week of the, uh, the the scheduled start of the Commissioner's Cup final. But you know what? That is putting the cart so far in front of the horse that we can't even see the cart anymore. We're just walking with the horse at this point because we're not into the playoffs yet. 
final weekend of the regular season starts here this evening for the River Dragons. Tonight against the Thunderbirds, and then Friday and Saturday against Carolina as well. Back home on Saturday, and I want to remind everybody it is Fan Appreciation Night on Saturday night, 7.05. There's giveaways, there's prizes, all kinds of fun stuff going on. It's also our last family four-pack night brought to you by Chick-fil-A Midland and Kissin' 99.3, where for just $40, you get four tickets to the game, then you get four hot dogs, four Pepsi product, four popcorn, four Chick-fil-A coupons. It's an amazing deal, only through the River Dragons office, so give us a call this week. 706-507-4625. Actually, tomorrow. Your only day is tomorrow. You cannot get it on the day of the game. You must call us tomorrow. 706-507-4625. All right, we'll take a break in the Air Force Heating and Air pregame show. When we come back, we'll have more coming your way here in just a moment. We will get inside the numbers to tonight's matchup. We'll tell you about what's going on, not only with the River Dragons, but also some transactions across the league here today. Don't forget, Columbus knows it is matching up with Mississippi in the first round, so we're keeping an eye on the Seawolves as well. Plus, we have the out-of-town scoreboard and our pregame chat with River Dragons head coach, Jerome Bichard. All that coming your way on the other side of the break. Stay tuned. This is River Dragons Hockey. It's cooler out here than it is inside. Is that my hat? When are you going to do something about the air? Yeah, you need to call Air Force Heating and Air, like, right now. Don't worry, I got you guys covered. Don't let your heating and air system become a hot mess this summer. Call Air Force Heating and Air now and get $500 off a new central air system. Only for a limited time. Air Force is always here for you. So I stopped in at Chick-fil-A for lunch and saw Officer Wilson come in. I decided to place a dine-in mobile order and have a cookie delivered to him just to show appreciation for his service for our community. A few minutes later, I noticed that Officer Wilson had gotten up and left, and I knew he hadn't gotten his cookie yet. And I'm headed to my car. I turn around and I see Allie, and she's running after me. Mr. Police Officer, Mr. Police Officer. <laughs> Usually when someone yells, Officer, Officer, they want to ask me about a ticket they got. I absolutely wanted the cookie. <laughs> this cookie's delicious. <laughs> At BEAM, we take pride in being a part of our community, and we're committed to seeing it grow. We continually volunteer with organizations that are making a difference. Together, we are building a better community while building the best internet that exceeds the technology of metropolitan cities. But more importantly, one that connects us all. We want to ensure reliability, so for this reason, we're willing to go the extra mile. We aim to provide the community with high-quality internet and cable services, because we live here too. Because at Beam, community is not just a place. It's the way we do business. Welcome back here in the Air Force Heating and Air pregame show. Tom Callahan here with you and the River Dragons getting closer to dropping the puck here at the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds Arena against the Carolina Thunderbirds. We appreciate you being here and the River Dragons rounding out the regular season here. And I'll tell you what, it's uh, going to be a good atmosphere tonight. Not sold out tonight. It will be sold out tomorrow night at this arena. But I know for Columbus, looking forward to getting into the playoffs and, uh, you know, Head coach Jerome Beecher kind of passed the comment earlier this week when we were uh, taping the television coaches show, which, by the way, airing uh, this evening on Channel 16, WYBU, Christian Television Network. So if you haven't seen that, check it out. It'll also re-air Saturday at 11.30 in the morning and uh, always worth checking out to see what Boomer has to say on the week. But he's ready for playoffs. I think a lot of the guys are ready for playoffs. They want to get going. Not that you want to ignore these games. And keep in mind, fans, last year, this series determined first overall in the league. So it could have come down to that this year, but it didn't. Columbus wrapped it up a couple of weeks ago. And so now the River Dragons just trying to make sure they rest some guys, get some other guys healthy, uh, and get over that little bit of a bump. And to that end, the River Dragons, let's start. We're talking about the uh, roster maneuvering for tonight's game. 
bringing in Brian Moore. Signed to a four-game PTO, Brian Moore, the brother of Kyle Moore. Those two played together in a game last year in Binghamton. And uh, you know what? It's it's great to see those two play together, and it's interesting because Kyle has had such a breakout year. He's a league all-star this year. Really looking forward to seeing those two playing together here this evening. And uh, Brian has had a bit of a rough go uh, between suspensions and injuries. He's only played three games this year in the SPHL, so just kind of now getting around to being healthy, getting back into form, being able to play a couple of games here down the stretch. It does help the River Dragons as they do look forward to resting some personnel here tonight. Justin McDonald did not make the journey down to Winston-Salem. He stayed back in Columbus. Also not making the trip down to uh, Winston-Salem and a little bit under the weather uh, from what I was told is uh, one of the rookie defensemen, Hugh Anderson. So Hugh, hope you feel better, get better soon. Uh, but he is not here and then it'll also be an off night for Austin Doe. So the uh, veteran forward getting a night of rest for the River Dragons, who with Brian Moore in the lineup, also now have Jay Krupp out there as well and uh, rostering the uh, the compliment here this evening. And I already told you the Thunderbirds not making any changes. They are going to go full tilt with their setup for this evening. But uh, I did want to talk about the moves that Mississippi has made because they – moved a bunch of things around and of course the reason we look at Mississippi that's the first round opponent for the River Dragons so just keeping an eye down the road here as of today David Aslin was released on waivers by the Seawolves uh, Joachim Nielsen and Blake Weirich and Yanni Liarakos all placed on season ending IR so they are out cannot come back cannot play the rest of the year and I know for Weirich it's, it's disappointing. Uh, Wyrick is a goaltender who's very capable, very talented, but a guy who just battles injuries constantly. And he is not going to be on the postseason roster for the Seawolves. They did, however, sign Joe Pace Jr. So the Mississippi Seawolves have Joe Pace back on the roster. So a little bit of a heads up there. He's coming out of the front office and will be part of things. Chris Cholek uh, is now playing for the Thunderbirds. We've seen him with a couple of different teams this year, but he is in the lineup tonight for Carolina uh, and signed with them a little bit earlier back on the uh, 8th of April. So a couple of names going around that uh, fans here would recognize. Also, one other move made yesterday was that uh, Trevor Babin has returned from his loan to Kalamazoo in the ECHL. So... That's really a look at the transactions and the movements uh, as we're getting a little bit closer here to the end of warm-ups and what's going on. And, of course, just keeping an eye on Mississippi, who are also in action here this evening. As a matter of fact, they are the only other game going on this evening in the FPHL. And they are facing off at 7.30 Central Time, 8.30 Eastern at the Raisin Canes River Center. So that will be a little bit later on tonight. And we look forward to uh, keeping an eye on that one as well. I know the Baton Rouge, certainly a disappointing season, but a season of growth for the Zydeco as they miss along with the Blue Ridge Bobcats locked out of the playoffs this year for the two expansion teams. But I think if you would have pulled most fans of any team at the beginning of the year, uh, they probably would have said, yeah, you would expect the expansion teams to miss and everybody else to make it. And that's how it broke down in the Continental Division this season. So... River Dragons and the Thunderbirds already know their first round opponents, but three in a row against each other here to round out the final weekend of the regular season. We're going to take a break in this Air Force Heating and Air pregame show. When we come back, we're going to take a look at the out-of-town scoreboard, which is brought to you by Zelmo Zippin. It's also a busy night in the NHL. Plenty of playoff implications there. Also Major League Baseball with quite a bit going on here. On a Thursday, bit of a getaway day for some of those teams. And we'll take a look at that, tell you what's going on when we return in just a moment. Stay tuned. There's more River Dragons hockey coming your way. Coming your way. An injury. We all dream. But dreams quickly become distant memories unless we do something about it. Do everything in our power to learn to lead. At Troy University, we teach everyone to be leaders in their field. We're dedicated to teaching a new generation to lead change.
Here he comes, boys. Sure is beautiful. Here it is, boys. Who's ready to put it to work? Me. Me. There's only one way to settle this. Rock. Where'd he come from? I win. Never saw him coming. Must be the camo. Drive off in a new John Deere from SunSouth right now with 0% financing on select models. SunSouth, equipment for those that do. Hi-ho, hi-ho, your gas is getting low. But you're in luck, pull your car or truck into Zelmo, Zelmo, Zelmo. This month at Zelmo's, all Celsius energy drinks, two for four dollars. But you're in luck, pull your car or truck into Zelmo, Zelmo, Zelmo. Always clean, always fast, always friendly. Zelmo Zip In, fueling life's passions for 20 years. It's cooler out here than it is inside. Is that my hat? When are you going to do something about the air? Yeah, you need to call Air Force Heating and Air like right now. Don't worry, I got you guys covered. Don't let your heating and air system become a hot mess this summer. Call Air Force now for our special $79 AC gas furnace or heat pump tune-up. Only for a limited time. Air Force Heating and Air is always here for you. In these two teams. So, all right, back here at the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds Arena. And as we do indeed take a look at our out-of-town scoreboard options, there's actually quite a bit going on here this evening. And uh, I'll tell you, this is... Uh, and if you're a golf fan, we'll get to the Masters. Don't worry. Uh, we will talk about that. But even on a Thursday in the normally quiet FPHL, the games going on tonight are all of interest to Continental Division fans. So River Dragons and Thunderbirds. Then Mississippi's at Baton Rouge. That's 730 Central Time. So a little bit later puck drop tonight. So we welcome any fans of... Other PHL teams might be tuning us in here this evening. We very much appreciate you being a part of this River Dragons broadcast. Thank you so much. In the NHL, 10 games on the docket on a busy Thursday night. Plenty of playoff implications about a lot of teams. Kind of looking at the standings uh, in the NHL. It's To me, it's wild the way things have gone up and down for some of these teams. Right now, the wild card in the East. Tampa at 95. They're in. Uh, but the question is that Metro Division, the third-place Islanders have 87 points. The Capitals, 85. The Penguins, 84. The Red Wings, 84. Philadelphia, 83. And in an 82-game season, Washington, Pittsburgh, Detroit have four games left. Philly has three games left. So a lot of dominoes would have to fall the right way for Philly, I think, to make it in. But, of course, you never know. That's why you got to play the games, right? So that's interesting to me, the way that that race has panned out. And then you look at the western side, where the wild card right now in the Pacific, the Kings have 93 points. The Predators, after going on some pretty good streaks, have uh, kind of fallen back to 500, but have enough points right now, 95 points. They are not going to catch Winnipeg. The Preds are in. We know that. But... The Kings are not in because they're third place in the Pacific with 93 points. Vegas is in the second wild card at 92. The surprising St. Louis Blues are up to 89. Now the Blues need everything to go their way. The Kings and the Vegas Golden Knights have four games each left. The Blues have three. They Three-point gap to Vegas, four-point gap to the Kings. The, the Blues would, would need hockey's version of incredible luck, but this is the same team that was... Uh, you know, in first or in last place on January 3rd, the year they won the Stanley Cup and just went on that incredible run. So the Blues have been known to find some magic uh, in the old silk hat. So, all right, scores going on tonight for you. Capitals and the Sabres are just underway, and there is no score in that hockey game, but that's critical for the Capitals. Panthers up 1-0 on the Blue Jackets. In the first, Flyers do have a 1-0 lead over the Rangers. That's not going to be an easy one for the Flyers, but they have to win every single game to keep their hopes alive. How about this one? This is a critical game for both of these teams. Red Wings and Penguins tied at 1, and that is only four minutes into the first period. So that's going to be a heck of a hockey game. Senators, Lightning are scoreless in the first. Leafs out to a 2-1 lead over the Devils in the first. 7-30, Canadians at the Islanders. Jets at the Stars. That's a battle of some top-ranked teams. 
in the Central Division. 10 o'clock Eastern, Sharks are at the crack in 10.30. The Flames are at the Kings. Flames have a bit of a chance to play some spoiler down the stretch here. Major League Baseball, a couple of games postponed by the weather today. Twins at Tigers, Brewers at Reds. A couple finals from earlier today. Unfortunately for you, Braves fans, the Mets offense woke up, and 16-4 is the final Mets over the Braves. Royals also beat the Astros 13-3. The Astros off to an abysmal 4-10 start to the season. Athletics beat the Rangers 1-0 earlier today. Only two games going on right now in Major League Baseball. Bottom of the first, Orioles, Red Sox are scoreless. And in the bottom of the third, Pirates and Phillies likewise scoreless. The Masters delayed start here today, so they did not finish the first round. Now they are figuring the weather is supposed to be nicer heading into the weekend. They should be caught up in Sunday's final by Sunday's final round. Everything should be normal on Sunday. Until then, however, you're going to have guys who are finishing their rounds tomorrow, and then Friday night's play will carry over into Saturday. And then they figure Saturday they will get the regular round three done before the sun goes down. So round four on Sunday should be just as normal with the Masters. But right now, Bryson DeChambeau came out just firing today. 65. He is your tournament leader at 7 under. Scotty Scheffler right behind him with a 66. That puts him at 6 under. And uh, from there, a couple of guys who did not get to finish today. Nikolai Hogard, uh, minus 5 through 13 holes. Danny Willett carded a 68. He's at minus four along with Max Homa. He is minus four through 10 holes. And then just to round out the top 10, all of these guys finished today. Ryan Fox, Cameron Davis are at minus three. Corey Connors, Byung Hoon An, uh, Joaquin Neiman, Will Zalatoris, Patrick Reed. Well, actually up to Will Zalatoris, all finished at minus two. Patrick Reed, uh, Tyrell Hatton, Matthew Pavon, uh, Brian Harmon and Ludwig Eberg and Tommy Fleetwood all at two under, but are still in the middle of their rounds. So DeChambro, leader in the clubhouse with a 65. Scotty Scheffler right behind him with a 66. And uh, that's your, your, I guess, your access point. You want a shot at the lead, but plenty of guys did not finish their rounds today. And just taking a quick look through uh, at some of the notable names. Tony Finau was minus one. Lucas Glover. Minus one today. Patrick Cantlay was minus one. Uh, Rory McIlroy was minus one. Tiger Woods also minus one. He's through 10. So Sergio Garcia is even. Did shoot a 72 today. That is in the book. Xander Shoffley a 72. He is even par as well. Phil Mickelson carded a one over 73 to start his Masters appearance. And I know there's a lot of pressure right now on the LIV golf situation. And how that's all going to pan itself out for these guys. Other names, John Rahm, plus 173 today. Mike Weir had a nice hole out on a chip shot, but he is at plus one through 17 holes, a former winner. Bubba Watson, another former Masters winner, at plus one. He's through 13 holes. Adam Scott, plus one through 12. Dustin Johnson, plus one through eight. So uh, just some of the notable names in the Masters tournament, but uh, that is round one, and it is in progress. It will be continued tomorrow. Uh, they're going to squeeze out as much as they can, finish the round tomorrow, then start round two. That'll carry over to Saturday morning, but they figure they'll be caught up enough by Saturday night that Sunday's round four, the final round of the Masters, should be as normal on a Sunday. All right, time for us to take a break. When we come back, we're going to have a chat with River Dragons head coach Jerome Bichart, so stay tuned. That's coming up on the other side here, and uh, then we're going to drop the puck here tonight. It's the first of... Three in three, the first two in Carolina, and the third one back home, Fan Appreciation Night on Saturday, April 13th, 7.05 p.m. Giveaways, prizes, all kinds of fun. It's the final family four-pack night as well. You can only get your family four-pack through the River Dragons office, and you cannot get a day game. You must come in and get it tomorrow or give us a call, 706-507-4625 to order your family four-pack tomorrow. All right. Break time. We'll be back with more in just a moment. This is Columbus River Dragons Hockey. A large touchscreen keeps everyone happy. The all-new Subaru Crosstrack. Dog tested. Dog approved. 
What? Tim Hortons has a new $6 breakfast bundle? With a mouthwatering breakfast sandwich, a golden hash brown with a small hotter iced coffee, and a classic donut made for your me time. Oh, and yours too. The $6 breakfast bundle at your neighborhood Tim's. We're always going a million different directions. But Kinetic Credit Union makes it easy for all of us to stay connected all in one place. With the Kinetic mobile app, we both can monitor our accounts on the go. We can create account alerts so we know when there's a change. Apply for a loan or credit card. We can even open a new account. Plus, you can quickly pay bills, transfer money, or make a deposit anytime, anywhere. Kinetic makes our life a whole lot easier. Kinetic Credit Union, the energy for your dreams. my ex lemon lime soda you're looking well i just needed something more refreshing more crisp i'm a starry now this is intense he's so vulnerable but i love you please oh buddy it'll be okay <laughs> or not huh starry does taste better <laughs> Welcome back on the Air Force Heating and Air pregame show. Tom Callahan joined by River Dragons head coach Jerome B. Sharp. Boom, uh, three and three. Carolina this weekend, you're rounding out the regular season. I suppose if somebody would have said, hey, heading into that final regular season weekend, you've got everything wrapped up by now, way back in October, you probably would have taken that. Yeah, you know what, and uh, didn't expect it, but, you know, you know, starting the season, you always know, like, these games early on, they mean something. And uh, it means a lot at the end. And, you know, we took care of business early, so we can kind of, uh, take a, uh, a relax a little bit, but uh, you know it is three and three against uh, uh, those guys, and uh, you know what we want to end on a on a positive note, but um, kind of juggling and balancing, you know, some rest and trying to win and trying to get guys uh, some some needed rest. Well, I imagine uh, that's really, I mean, coaching is management at this point for you. It's managing time, managing the bumps and bruises, and then managing the cohesion going into the playoffs. Yeah, no, uh, for, for sure. And then, you know, like last last Sunday, um, you were down in Mississippi, you know, kind of short staff, kind of give some guys days off. And, um, you know, we were supposed to trap 1-3-1 one, one the whole night and this and that. And it wasn't much of a trapping game on Sunday, uh, you know, so... You know, tonight, uh, kind of more of the same, just kind of work on some things. Let's like really fine tune our game and, you know, identify identify when we need to go and when we need to sit back a little bit. We don't need to, I don't need to go 100 miles an hour, you know, the whole game tonight. I need, I need to win our battles, get into our spurts, give ourselves an opportunity to win. Um, just play a nice, simple road game. And I know uh, Carolina still has something to play for. If they could possibly catch and pass Binghamton, you know, they look ahead and, and think, hey, if we advance also, that could be advantageous to them. So you know you're going to get Carolina's best. Yeah, you know what? And uh, I talked to Coach Harry. They're not, uh, I don't think they're sitting anybody. Uh, I think they want to go into everything. And, you know, uh, they manage manage uh, a different way as far as their practice and their uh, their ice time that way. So um, two different ways. And we'll see who, uh, which one does, uh, which one works. All right, well, coming into this game here uh, this weekend, I know no Justin McDonald, uh, a couple other things moving around, but anybody in particular that uh, may be with those advantages uh, for them to step up into the lineup here that you're looking for something out of? Um, you know what? I just want guys to play play hard, play smart, and, uh, you know, I know what everybody brings to the table. Um, you know what? Cogs is going tonight, and uh, I don't think I don't think he's happy with his uh, last five starts. I don't think I'm happy with his five starts. Um, not saying that we lost, uh, you know, because of him per se, but, you know, we had a conversation and, you know, I'm like, I, I, I'm like, Cogs, it's important for you to, this is yours. Uh, it's important for you to, you know, kind of get back on track and, you know, um, and give us a, a couple good games here and this is yours to lose. And, and I did tell him, I'm like, um, if we were starting tomorrow, 
I'd probably be going with uh, Willie, um, and just that's just a hard fact. So um, I'm not saying that to put pressure on you, but I mean let's uh, let's get yourself in a good mindset, and uh, and whether we win lose, let's play well. And then, well, I guess we could just go right to the keys to the game. We've covered pretty much everything else here. What do you got for me? You know what? I uh, kind of talked about it a little bit. You know, let's play a nice, easy road game. You know, no pressure. Um, do all the little things right. Less is more. Dump and chase. No turnovers. And let's capitalize on our on our uh, opportunities. All right, boom. Thanks for joining us. Best of luck tonight. You bet. Back with a drop of the puck in just a moment. This is River Dragons Hockey. is upon us. We must prepare. Cold and darkness will spread across the land. The nights will be long. Hey, what are you guys doing? Air Force is here to fix the heat. Don't let winter leave you out in the cold. Call Air Force Heating and Air now for our special $79 AC gas furnace or heat pump tune-up. Only for a limited time. Air Force Heating and Air is always here for you. We all dream, but dreams quickly become distant memories unless we do something about it. Do everything in our power to learn to lead. At Troy University, we teach everyone to be leaders in their field. We're dedicated to teaching a new generation to lead change. Even though I'm away at college, Kinetic Credit Union is still the best way for me to stay connected here and at home. With the Kinetic mobile app, I have control of my accounts wherever I go. I can easily transfer money between internal and external accounts, get money faster by setting up recurring transfers, and I can find the nearest ATM or branch right from my phone. Plus, I can add my Kinetic cards to my phone's digital wallet and enjoy quick, secure, contactless payments. By the way, Mom, I need some more money. Kinetic Credit Union, the energy for your dreams. Never saw him coming. Must be the camo. And we are indeed back and getting ready to go here. Just a couple of minutes away from dropping the puck between the Carolina Thunderbirds and your Columbus River Dragons. Tom Callahan here with you as the coaching and training staff for the Thunderbirds makes their way out to the Thunderbirds bench past the River Dragons bench. And Kevin St. Jacques rejoining the River Dragons coaching staff as he did in playoffs last year. Back with the club again on the bench here tonight next to Jerome Bichard. And in case you're just joining us or may have missed it, Brian Moore will wear number 27 tonight. Kyle Moore's brother, he is back. They played one game together last year, and he's back for another go-around with the River Dragons here. Signed a four-game PTO with the team. And he'll wear number 27, anticipating those two playing in a line together here this evening. And they have the inflatable up down to our left, but we're a little, a little slow getting to the start here tonight, but a couple of minutes behind it looks like. So we'll expect the starting lineups out here at some point. I see the Thunderbirds actually walking around now. And the officials are about to take to the ice as well. Neither team has come out yet. The River Dragons have not come out onto the ice yet either. They're waiting in the corner. So that gives us a couple extra minutes to kill. Why don't we go back and talk again about the playoff situation here in case you missed that right off the hop. Starting things out here as the officials are on the ice. But the River Dragons have wrapped up the FPHL title, the Continental Division, and 128 points for Columbus this year, 39, 7, 3, 3, and 1. And so for the River Dragons, uh, having that wrapped up means that they're able to rest some guys, which they did last weekend. They are doing so again this weekend. Uh, Justin McDonald did not make the trip down here. Uh, also a couple of the guys out, Hugh Anderson, a little under the weather. Send Hugh get well wishes. Hope he's feeling better soon. Austin Doe has the night off tonight as well. 
Uh, so Columbus, a little bit of shuffling out there. And uh, I asked uh, Jerome Bichard his thoughts on line combinations. He said, "Well, you know, we're gonna we're gonna try some different things tonight. We're gonna look at some different uh, different looks and you know see how some players play together. And of course." This is something the River Dragons had gone through before, of course. Early in the season, you may remember Justin McDonald was paired with Alexander Jemayev. Those two played very well together. But since then, they were separated, uh, and McDonald has continued to play well. Jemayev, uh is up there with the River, among the River Dragons' leaders in goal scores. So he's continued to produce, but the lines have changed up a little bit. They'll continue to change up a little bit tonight, especially with Doe and McDonald out up front. Anderson on defense means that the River Dragons will have Parker Layton in the lineup. And now, as you can tell, the Thunderbirds are getting set to come out on the ice, and they do so. We also may see Carter Shinkarik up front again here tonight. And Shinkarik playing up front and uh, being able to play some center. But still, it's interesting watching him. I mean, he's been a forward most of his career, playing some defense here this year. He's learned to attack defensively, but now he also has a defensively responsible mindset. Like, he'll go flying up the ice, and he's so fast. He's the first guy up the ice. But then he'll come flying all the way back down the ice on the back check. And uh, this kind of has, you can see he's checking a little bit more defensively in the uh, River Dragons end of things, which is never a bad thing to see, and it's certainly appreciated. They're introducing the starting lineup for the Thunderbirds down here on the ice. Not a sellout here tonight. It is anticipated to be one tomorrow. Uh, but tonight, still the uh, vocal faithful are here. Cowbells and such in hand. And so the noisemakers are going in the full lineup out there for the Thunderbirds. So while we have a minute, why don't we take a look at tonight's starting, our starting goaltenders for you. And it is going to be Mario Cavallari getting the nod for the Thunderbirds here tonight. Cavallari, 19-4-0-1. With a 9.30 save percentage, 2.19 goals against, and a shutout on the air. They'll be opposed by Brendan Colgan, and you heard what Jerome Bichard said if you heard the interview. If you didn't, I'll reiterate briefly, is that he basically said, you know what, I know that Brendan Colgan, who's starting tonight for the River Dragons, not happy with his stretch of maybe five or so games, Boomer's not happy with his play and was honest with him and said, you know what, if I had to make a choice right now, maybe it's William Lavalier who starts. But instead, he's giving Colgan the weekend and said, hey, let's let's get back. Let's get sharp. He's been the River Dragons number one. He's earned the right to start. And he made it clear it's Colgan's net. He just has to make sure that he's sharp going into the playoffs. He's 21-5-0-1 with an 893 and a 2.92 goals against average and two shutouts. All right, we're just about ready to get the anthem underway here as the starting lineups have been announced, and they take down the inflatable down in the uh, corner to our left. And so let's send it on down to the ice for tonight's anthem.
Detroit Anthem in the books, and we are just that much closer to dropping the puck and getting things underway here between the River Dragons and the Thunderbirds. Tom Callahan here with you as we are getting set here for this evening's contest. It's the first of three and three to end the weekend between Carolina and Columbus. River Dragons in their road white uniforms here tonight, and the Thunderbirds in the black home unis tonight. Might see the Reds tomorrow. But for tonight, it'll be the classic chess matchup. Black versus white. River Dragons rolling left to right in front of our broadcast location. They are going to start the line of Wickline, Jamea, and Swan. And then it's going to be Shinkarik out there along with Leighton on defense. So Shinkarik will be playing D here this evening as we get set to start things off here. And we're underway with the puck at center. Carolina want to try to move it ahead, but the River Dragons toss it on in. Thunderbirds look to move it right back out the other way through center. Leighton must chase back into his own end. And he'll bank it away to center where Carolina throws it back in. Thunderbirds are tagging up here. As Colgan leaves it behind the net. And now ahead the feed to Wickline. On the wing, his cross ice feed went off the back of the ankle of Shinkarik. Shemayev. Back forward at center to Layton. Right side, Shinkarik. In over the blue line. He'll just flip it in behind the net. Layton actually up on the forecheck here. Played around on the near side. River Dragon starting a change in behind the play. Thunderbirds dump it in. They'll do the same. Utita bounces one around to the far side. Baker shoving his man on the far wall. Petrantonio with a backhand gets it out. This line is Bersani, Petrantonio, and Storjahan tonight. In the absence of Austin Doe. And again, no McDonald as well here this evening. Puck kept in left point by Firth, the shot in, Colgan the save, rebound, Keplinger is stopped. Colgan hugging the right post. And now away come the River Dragons, two on two, Storjahan moving up, stops in over the line, and had his stick tipped as he tried to send a pass across. Cleared back out to center, glove down Bockwell, will feed it back to Underwood, who flattens the roller. River Dragons trying to move it ahead. Storjahan sweeps it ahead too far for Bersani. Thunderbirds regroup. Both teams working on the change as Keplinger dumps it in from center. Buck 36 into this first period. No score, Carolina and Columbus. Moore will move it ahead. That's Kyle Moore out with his brother Brian Moore. Ryan Hunter centering this troika here this evening. Puck at center ahead to Hunter. Right side, here's Kyle Moore moving in. Moore drags it behind the net, wraps it around. Shot in front, save made, rebound. Brian Moore couldn't get it to go. Somehow Cavallari was able to get back and stop the wraparound. The goal light went on behind him, but the puck was not in. Dumped in from center, chased down by Slahetka. He'll leave it for Popoff. River Dragons on the regroup up the right side. Kyle Moore with a backhand ahead, a bouncer back into the Thunderbirds in, Bioni on it. Let's push back into the Columbus end again. Pop off, Slahetka left side ahead. Brian Moore leaving it back. Here's Kyle Moore, right wing, knocked away from him. Left side, turned back. Kramer moving it ahead, and now tangled up. Salak tried to center. Fans wanted a penalty, none coming. Pastuka into the corner after it as well. Puck fed to the point. Now over to the far dot, wrist shot. Colgan save, rebound away to the wall. Kramer feeds it up to the right point. Pressure there, but able to keep it in his Farmer. Thunderbirds trying to move it around. Pass for Farmer off the toe of a sticking out of the zone. Down the ice. Cavallari way out to play it, but he's going to leave it for Bioni. Columbus changing it up once again here. 3-10 into the first period. No score. Thunderbirds left side. Kramer moving it ahead right to Shinkarik, actually. Shinkarik pass ahead. Went off a shin pad. And that pinball's right to Layton. Has to play it over to Jay Krupp, who jams it off the dasher, but not out. Kept in by Salak, but off a skate, back to Krupp, and he moves it out. Jamea, cross ice. Now here's Layton. He'll dump it in from there. Cavallari put it right in front to Krupp. Still it's one in front. Cavallari diving, keeps it out. An incredible stop. Cavallari with a huge puck handling mistake, but he bailed himself out. The River Dragons were just as shocked as anybody that puck was given away right in front of the net. 
Unbelievable. There's a shot coming in. Cavalier with a blocker save over to the corner. Columbus should have two already. Right side, here's Krupp towards the net. Sticked away to the left point. Layton, quick shot, save made. Cavalieri holds that rebound. 4.08 gone here in the first. Let's see if we can get our referee introductions in here for you. Tonight, the referee introductions brought to you by the Optical Shop in Phoenix City. You should see the game they're missing. Right now, the Optical Shop. For just $99 and a bag of chips, you can get two pair of eyeglasses. Your referees tonight, number 49, Justin Crawford, number 38, Andy Lindley. The lines are number 31, Chris Kwong, and number 13, Anders Gustafsson. Puck out at center, toss back in by the River Dragons. Fed around behind the net, Thunderbirds on it, and the stick stolen. Firth lost his twig in the boards. Here's Petrantonio side of the net, feeds it behind, gets it back in front, of bouncing puck up the high slot. Storjahan keeps it in, but gave it away, and first just boots it out. Back in comes Wickline on the right side. Wickline, Storjahan, back to Wickline on the right wing. Wickline trying to sneak free over there. And now it ends up with Clay Keeley. Keeley on the far side, can't clear. Ends up with the left point, kept in. Bach will a shot, glove save Cavalieri, and he'll hold on. Not quite five minutes into this first period. Cavalieri had a recall earlier this year. Actually, he's been a couple different places. He's been loaned, been recalled, but now he's back with the Thunderbirds in time to ensconce himself back in the crease as the number one. And I'll tell you what, tonight he's looked like a guy with some nervous energy out there. A couple uncharacteristic mistakes, although he's bailed himself out both times. The River Dragons haven't been able to take advantage of it just yet. Brian Moore up on the four check as the Thunderbirds trying to move it out to center, and they do get it ahead. On the left wing side, pushing up is Whalen. His shot wide of the net. Cleared away by the River Dragons, but not out. Right point, Clay Keeley keeping it in. Centering attempt, push behind the net. Out the near side into the slot, a bouncing puck in towards the goal, but Slaheka blocked it. He'll lob it ahead on the right side. Kyle Moore going to get it off the dasher, cutting it on goal with a backhand. Popped up over top of the net as Moore was pulled down. No penalty there. Now back the other way. Here come the Thunderbirds. On the right wing, a centering attempt. Slaheka twice blocking the pass. In behind the net, Shinkarik right side to Moore. He'll just deflect it out to center. Whalen will throw it back in. Thunderbirds getting a change going here. River Dragons electing to do the same as Ryan Hunter tips it down the ice. Bioni after it into his own end. Six minutes into the first period, no score. Played back on the right side. Here's Bersani moving in. Has Swan with him. Bersani flipped it back door, but too far for Swan. Up to the left point, Layton. Long shot, tumbling wide of the net. On to the right side. Around it goes Bersani. Fell as he kept it in. Around to Jamaev. Left side, Layton down the wall, but it hopped over his stick. Thunderbirds just shove it out. Swan has to chase back into the Columbus end. Quickly turning at center with it now, Jamaev. Jamaev up on the right side. In over the line, lost it. And now back the other way, Thunderbirds two on one, led by Schnapp. Schnapp on the left side, walking in. Swan getting back to help out. Broke up the play, puck still in. Baker a shot, and a right pad save, Colgan. Now Jamaev up the right wing wall, tried to backhand it deep, cut off at the line, turned back. Up the left side is Baker by himself, waiting for help. Now he feeds it across, puck at the line, a shot, they score. Butina coming in off the line, change from the right point. Columbus was passive and allowed all the time in the world for that pass to come across. Carolina gets on the board first, 7-0-1, time of the goal. And the Thunderbirds are out in front, 1-0. Butina from Baker. And for John Butita, that's his 16th goal of the year. So Columbus now down, pushing ahead though, one nothing in. Here's Petrantonio with a shot, Cavalieri save, rebound. Winkline bounced it in on goal, held by Cavalieri. 7-14 into the first, we'll take a break. 
And a little bit of pushing and shoving in front of the net. But the linesmen get in there. We're back with more in a moment. First period action. Brought to you by Chick-fil-A Midland. This is Columbus River Dragons Hockey. Hello there. My name is Seychelle. And what makes the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich original to me is that punch of flavors that's unlike any other. You get the crispy tenderness of the chicken and that hint of sourness from the pickles. Ta-da! <laughs> Hey, I'm Juan, and what makes the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich original to me is every single time you take a bite, you know you're going to get chicken that's crispy, golden, and juicy. The Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich is the gold standard of chicken sandwiches. There's no touching it. Good internet. Get upfront surprise-free pricing with Wi-Fi modem included and no data caps. Plus bundle internet 300 with YouTube TV for just $92.99 per month for 12 months with auto pay and paperless billing. What? Tim Hortons has a new $6 breakfast bundle? With a mouth-watering breakfast sandwich, a golden hash brown with a small hot or iced coffee, and a classic donut made for your me time. Oh, and yours too. The $6 breakfast bundle at your neighborhood Tim's. Food and Drug Administration. And, drug administration. and so we are back with a face-off coming up to the right of Mario Cavallari. First period brought to you by Chick-fil-A Midland. Tom Callahan here, Drew Pierce producing here this evening. At the Fairgrounds Arena in Winston-Salem. First of three in a row between these two teams to round out the regular season tonight, then tomorrow night and Saturday back home for Fan Appreciation Night. 705 Puck Drop at the Columbus Civic Center. Then on to the playoffs. River Dragons taking on the Mississippi Seawolves in round one. Face-off is finally pushed out, but right back in by Columbus. Petrantonio into that left side corner. Help from Wickline. Petrantonio trying to put it to the point. It was blocked. Ends up with Salak. Salak onto the near side. Bioni up the wall, down for the right point. Underwood trying to keep it in. Wickline helping him out. Floats it ahead. Petrantonio on the slot. Shot off the goal post. And into Cavallari. He covers it. Petrantonio beat Cavallari on the glove side, but the puck hit the iron and went right back underneath the Thunderbirds goaltender who spins around and puts a mid over it. Oh, man, that's a tough one. Three times now the River Dragons have appeared to be on their way to scoring a goal and haven't put one in yet, but the chances are there. 7.46 into this first period. It's one nothing Thunderbirds. Draw one back in the Carolina end, controlled by the Thunderbirds as they look to move it out. Slahat gets center, pounds it right back in. Cavallari out for a stroll, flattens that roller, giving away in the left side, though Kyle Moore centering feed. Brian Moore shot is tipped out of play. Keeley just barely getting a stick to that one. That was Nate Keeley. As the centering feed, Brian Moore just let it go right away. And they're going to put the face off on the far side of the ice. So Hunter, Moore, and Moore. Slahetka and Popoff. If you're just joining us, Brian Moore signing a four-game PTO, sends to the right point. Popoff with a shot, and he fanned on that one. Thought he might have broke his stick, but I don't think he did. Popoff trying to put it the other way now. Hunter couldn't come up with it. Slahetka in his own end, flings it far side into the skates of Kyle Moore. This pass wanted Brian Moore on the near side, deflected but got through to him. Now up the left wing, here's Kyle Moore. Walks in, cutting in front, poke check Cavalieri, rebound in front, and Hunter couldn't get the shot away. Puck at center, tied up Brian Moore all over Chris Cholek. They tie up in front of the Thunderbirds bench as the puck ends up on a play. We get a whistle here, 844 into the first period. Face-off will stay at center ice. Jamea found for the draw, along with Swan and Storjahan. He wins it back. Layton getting it across to Shinkarik. And the River Dragons look to move it ahead. Jamea on the near shot. Now Keplinger trying to step back in, held up by Shinkarik. Layton to the puck. Reverses around to Shinkarik. Shinkarik up the wall. Jemayev, a little backhand flip, gets out to center where Whalen turns it right back in. Colgan slows it down behind the net for Shinkarik. 
Up the near side. Storjahan can't get it out of there. Keplinger holding it in. Leighton will try the far side now. And he'll wedge it out. Storjahan took a swat, missed it. Whalen back the other way. Passion Carrick. Leighton after the puck, no icing. Fed to the far side here. Swan after it. Back after the rolling puck. Swan tied up in the far corner. Shinkarik back towards Swan. Thunderbirds are working on a change while they've got the puck in the zone here. Columbus is having a heck of a time just moving it through center. They finally get it down the ice, and they'll change the personnel. Coming up on the halfway mark of this first period, it's 1-0 Carolina on a Butita goal. Here's Wickline stealing at center and moving in. He's got some traffic in front. Tried to walk in front, but he was caught from behind. Thunderbirds back the other way, and now big check on Pastuka as Underwood steps up at the line. But the puck not out. Kramer feeding it down low. Pastuka couldn't catch up with it. Pastuka in the left wing corner. Trying to move it around to the wall. He pushes it behind the net. Bockwell on it. Bockwell up the boards. Not out of the zone. Puck at the right point. Kept in by Salak. The pile forms just inside the blue line. Petrantonio trying to push it along. It's not going anywhere right now. Now it's poked out to center. Bioni tipping it in the other way. And here's Bockwell after it. Schnapp pushing him off the puck. Centering attempt right to Colgan, and he'll hang on. And that'll get us to a break. Nine and a half to go here in period number one. One of the Carolina. We're right back with more in just a moment. This is River Dragons Hockey. Dragons Hockey. Hey y'all, my name is Tiara, and a little thing that I love about the Chick-fil-A Spicy Chicken Biscuit is that it has the perfect amount of spice to jumpstart my day. I just love how the biscuit just matches perfectly with the spice on the chicken filet. Whoever thought of it, thank you so much. <laughs> Hi, my name is Robert, and a little thing I love about Chick-fil-A Spicy Chicken Biscuit is the biscuit. It reminds me of my grandma's homemade biscuit. It's always buttery and savory. The chicken is always crispy. Then you add the spices to the chicken. Instant classic. Hi-ho, hi-ho, your gas is getting low, but you're in luck, pull your car or truck into Zelmo, Zelmo, Zelmo's. This month at Zelmo's, all Celsius energy drinks, two for four dollars. But you're in luck, pull your car or truck into Zelmo, Zelmo, Zelmo's. Always clean, always fast, always friendly. Zelmo Zip In, fueling life's passions for 20 years. First period action brought to you by Chick-fil-A Midland. Don't forget our Chick-fil-A Midland family four pack. Also brought to you by our sister station, Kissing 99.3. The last one is the last game of the regular season, Saturday. You cannot buy them the day of the game. You have to call tomorrow to get your family four pack. Brought to you by Chick-fil-A Midland and Kissing 99.3. $40 gets you four tickets, four hot dogs, four popcorn, four Pepsi products, four Chick-fil-A coupons. Shot off the face off his glove down by Colgan. He'll hang on. Of course, you can always come down and buy them at the office if you so choose. Face off will be to his left. It is fan appreciation night on Saturday. There'll be prizes and giveaways, all kinds of fun stuff. And then round one of the playoffs starts on the road against Mississippi Wednesday the 17th. Friday the 19th, the first home game of the playoffs will be game two of the best of three first round. River Dragons moving it in. Here's Kyle Moore in over the line to the backhand. Moore trying to walk it in front. It drifts into Cavalieri who covers. 8.45 to go in the first. one nothing. Thunderbirds in the lead. Face off will be to the right of the Thunderbirds goal. So now it is Storjahan Krupp-Jameyev out there with Leighton and Shinkarik. Storjahan hopes to draw to the point. Leighton onto the left side. In Krupp into the slot. Shot Storjahan stopped by Cavalieri who pulls his helmet off. As he had a strap pop there. Eight thirty-six left here in the first face off will be in the offensive zone once again. Nice puck movement there, real quick by the River Dragon. So Jamea moved it over to Storjahan. He got it to the point, and then it was back down half wall high slot. Quick shot. Good movement. 
Yeah, we didn't like that face off. Let's do it again. Keplinger will get kicked out of the face off. Nope, weren't lined up there either. They're going to have to hold the clock now for two seconds. Finally, the face off down, but this time Thunderbirds win it. And they are able to move it out to center as Boutita on the left wing. Cross ice seed, bouncing into the River Dragons, end of things. Keplinger, roller behind the net, out the near side. The feed to the left point, Bioni. Bioni keeps it in, shot towards the net off a shin pad in front and wide. And now it's moved ahead and out to center. Here comes Storjahan. He'll dump it into the left wing corner. Jay Krupp going to get it. Group lost his stick in Bioni skates. Bioni able to dump it away. Boutita at center, right wing feet. Banked in over the line. Here come the Thunderbirds again. And now a penalty coming up against Underwood for hooking. Smart play by Baker. He latched onto Underwood's stick and then he picked his arms up. And made it look like Underwood hooked him. So Underwood into the Abercrombie bonding penalty box. Twelve ten time of the penalty. Power play for the Thunderbirds. They are 22.7%. That's third in the league this year. River Dragons still first on the kill at 87.2. And there's Bersani being pesky on that kill. As it's turned the other way now, Thunderbirds bring it ahead. Stepping on the left wing side, Pastuka into the corner for Salak. Salak running two back there, Keplinger behind the net. Into the near side corner, backhands to the left point. Baker, left half wall, Keplinger up top, but the pass missed Pastuka and goes out. Baker trying to leave it off in space as the Thunderbirds move back in here. Salak onto the left wing, Kramer down low. In behind the net, out the far side. Kramer towards Salak. Salak, right wing. Behind the net again. Keplinger, right half wall into the slot. That one punted down low, but Salak couldn't get to it. Keplinger over to the near dot. Baker into the slot. There's a shot and a blocker saved by Colgan. Here's Slahetka trying to move it off the dasher, and that hits someone at the River Dragons bench. They're saying that'll keep the face off inside the zone. The face off should go outside the zone if it hits someone on the River Dragons bench outside the zone. But they're putting it back inside. 6.37 to go in the first, 47 seconds to go in the hooking call against Underwood. 1-0 Carolina in the lead. Right now, a lot of talking going on on that Columbus bench. Puck kept in, Keeley to the right side. Butita shot and a save there by Colgan. Puck ends up top, Keeley over to the right side. Into the slot, Schnapp, backdoor feed, and that one didn't connect with Tjolek. Tjolek up top, onto the right side. That shot in is caught by Colgan, he'll hold. 25 seconds to go on the power play. Underwood is already anxiously up on his skates. Face off to the left of Colgan. Jemayev in across from Butita. Schnapp on the right side. They'll feed it up top. And get it back on the right half wall. Feed for the front of the net, blocked away by Layton. And sent down the ice. Big hit back in the River Dragons end, but Layton, after he made the clear, got finished off there, but no problems. Clay Keeley on it here as Underwood steps out of the box. We go back to five on five. Columbus has killed it off. Butita in over the line, puck in the high slot. Butita leaving it off to the left side. Here's Firth to the left half wall, sweeps it into the corner. Tied up over there, Bockwell. 
Getting a little help, Ryan Hunter pulling it free. Hunter through center, but the pass picked off and brought right back in on the left wing side. There's a shot in on Colgan, the save as Farmer brought it in. 5.22 to go in the first, it's 1-0 Carolina. Face off will be to the right of Colgan. Hunter and across from Salak. Carolina into the left side corner after it. Slahetka onto the far wall. Brian Moore waiting for it over there. Puts it back behind the net towards Slahetka. Around to the near side to Kyle Moore on the right wing. He'll wedge one up in the air. Hunter coming down with it. In over the line, leaves it for Brian Moore. He wheels in space up top. Moore turning, leaving it off for Pop off for his shot. And that's deflected wide. Slahetka off angle chance, missed the net. Pop off to the right point, able to keep it in. Feeds it down towards Moore, who pops it up in the air, gloves it down to himself. Puck pushed along and now wedged out. Ends up on the right side at center. Pastuka with Slahetka on him. Turned it over, but that puts the play offside. 4.40 to go here in the first. one nothing. Thunderbirds in the lead. We'll take our final break of this Chick-fil-A first period. Brought to you by Chick-fil-A Midland. We're back with more in a moment on River Dragons Hockey. I Spice? Wait. Who's that? It's my ex, Lemon Lime Soda. You're looking well. I just needed something more refreshing, more crisp. I'm a starry now. This is intense. He's so vulnerable. But I love you. Please. Ah, oh, buddy, it'll be OK. Or not. Huh, starry does taste better. <laughs> Hey y'all, my name is Tiara, and a little thing that I love about the Chick-fil-A Spicy Chicken Biscuit is that it has the perfect amount of spice to jumpstart my day. I just love how the biscuit just matches perfectly with the spice on the chicken filet. Whoever thought of it, thank you so much. <laughs> Hi, my name is Robert, and a little thing I love about Chick-fil-A Spicy Chicken Biscuit is the biscuit. It reminds me of my grandma's homemade biscuit. It's always buttery and savory. The chicken is always crispy. Then you add the spices to the chicken. Instant classic. It's, it's our roads. roads. It's, it's our, our safety. safety. Visit www.sharetheroadsafely.gov. Back here in the Chick-fil-A Midland first period. Tom Callahan here with you with a face-off coming up just outside the Thunderbirds line. The offside brought to you by Old School Barber Shop. They're online at Old School Barber, S-H-O-P-P-E. Dot com. If your sides are a little off, get lined up at Old School Barbershop. Make your next appointment online anytime. You can also book 24-7 through their Facebook and Instagram. Reservations highly recommended at Old School Barbershop. Columbus will push the puck into the Carolina end, but the Thunderbirds able to move it up the left side here through center, dumped into the far corner. Late and around after it. They'll stop behind the net. Parker Layton looks out the left side. Storage Han to center. Shinkarik plays it off his skate. Now it rolled away from him. Play is offside and touched up by Shinkarik just before the puck went back the other way. The officials talking about whether or not I assume this faceoff should go all the way down. They are going to leave it on the uh, dot just outside the Thunderbirds blue line. Petrantonio will push the puck ahead into the Thunderbirds end of things as it's played around. Oh boy, dangerous carom off the glass right in the slot, but there was nobody there for it. Out at center, Shinkarik trying to play it back. Boutina now trying to scoop it past Leighton, but Leighton blocked it. And now there's a shot. Keplinger off the goal post. Puck to the right point, sent back around behind the net. A bouncer towards the near side. Petrantonio hooked up, trying to get it out. He does battle it out to center. And now the other way, Butina had a knock away by Petrantonio. Leighton turning it back down. Thunderbirds back up the left side. Bioni in over the line, carrying into the left wing corner, trying to center. It was blocked, goes around to the far side. Storjahan up with it. He'll lift it out to center. Jemayev. On the wing, moves in, leaves it for Krupp. Krupp, wrist shot. That one hit a body and goes out of play. 3-10 to go here in the first. one nothing. Thunderbirds in the lead. Want to remind you that any River Dragons win streak of three or more games this year is brought to you by Tim Hortons. 
Join Tim's Rewards today and get any flavor medium cold drink in your first week when you sign up. Visit TimHortons.com or download the app in your app store. Draw to the right of the Thunderbirds net. Columbus controls over to the right point. Underwood will fling it back in around the glass. Jemayev in behind the net. Around to scoop it up is Nate Keeley. Keeley up the right side, able to move it ahead to center. And here comes Schnapp. Schnapp on the left wing. Cuts in over the line. High slot, fed it down low. Bouncing off it there was Whalen. Puck ends up behind the net. Schnapp, far side. Looking again in front. Keeley on it. His back end is cleared away by Krupp. Behind the net it goes, Bockwell pressured and to get it back to Underwood. Underwood off the glass and just gets it out. That'll be an icing call. But at least it alleviates the pressure, slows things down, gets a whistle with 2.31 to go in the first. Face off will be to the right of Brandon Colgan. Been a busy period for Colg so far. Cavalieri as well. Cavalieri, though, in the first uh, couple of shifts of the game, it was more of his own making the adventures. Face off to the right of the River Dragons net, tied up on the dot. And now Krupp able to flip that one out. Down the ice it goes. This will not be icing. Columbus gets the change it needs. Brissani up on the four check. Now he'll peel out as Hunter and Kyle Moore join him. Brian Moore steps out on the ice as well. And Brian Moore steals it back. He'll move it ahead. In over the line. Wheeling to the right wing side. In space. Gets it across. Lahetka down the wall. Hunter looking to center. Couldn't get it through. Kennedy banks it up the left side. Pastuka looking to clear. Moore able to keep it in. Hunter after it. Left side corner. Around to the right wing now. And a chance again for the Thunderbirds to move it out. Pass went behind everybody. Pastuka had to go back for it. And he will force it at least just over the line. Kyle Moore steps back in with it. Runs into a check. And now it's sent back out. But right to pop off. Pop off. With a moment. Now he flips it in. And around behind the net. Kennedy up the right side. And it's turned over again. Puck in space. Moore just avoids a check. Kyle Moore knocked down now. Finally Thunderbirds away with it. Up the left side, Kennedy leading the rush by himself. Feeds into the slot, a shot deflected away by Slahetka. Cross ice feed, here's Kennedy who's been out there for a long shift. He'll try to put it in front, deflected behind. Fed to the left point, one minute to go in the period. Vioni over to the right point, Kennedy his shot in on Colgan, saved and he got the whistle. Didn't have the puck, but he got the whistle. 53.8 seconds to go in the first. 1-0 Thunderbirds, and the crowd is uh, an edgy one here on a Thursday. And the energy is high for this crowd here in Winston-Salem. Plenty of buzz around this team, as there always is. And this is the big rivalry for Columbus, and these two teams always get up to play one another. There is uh, some intense dislike Draw will be to the left of Colgan. Keplinger's tossed out of the draw. Baker's going to come in. Columbus trying to force it back out towards the line. Petrantonio ahead just too far for Swan on the lead. All the way down to Cavalieri, who's going to hook it around behind the net to the right wing side. Sent down. Now that could be icing. Here's a race. Shinkarik against Butita. They wave it off. Butita hustling to beat out Shinkarik, and that doesn't happen every day. A clearing attempt goes off a stanchion, finally kicks around to Wickline. Wickline, though, can't clear the zone. Put it right into a pack of Carolina players. Wickline on the right side here. Columbus is really doing a lot of cross-ice passes at the absolute worst times. And now a chance in on Colgan. Save made rebound is pushed across. And around Petrantonio trying to get it out of the zone. Wickline stood up, but the puck does leave the zone, and now Carolina's just going to eat the clock and the end of the period. So the Thunderbirds, the only goal of the frame, going out with a 1-0 lead here. 
Certainly a lot of the energy and the momentum from this first period belonging to Carolina here on home ice. And of course the River Dragons resting several players here this evening as well out of the lineup. But I tell you what, Carolina looks like a team that uh, even though I guess because of building circumstances, which we talked about in the uh, pregame show, they won't be able to have that home ice advantage if they did get that far to the uh, Commissioner's Cup final. But still they've come out like they were shot out of a cannon here this evening and uh, have that one nothing lead. And the two teams, a lot of back and forth chances, but you look at Columbus right now and just hope they're able to clean that up a little bit here into periods number two and three. So we will see. We will see how that's all going to work itself out for this River Dragons hockey team. But in the meantime, Columbus needs to pick itself up here in the intermission and come back out for... Period number two and then number three here in this opening period of a three and three against these two teams. Thursday night, tonight, tomorrow night, Friday night, both here at Carolina and then Saturday night back in Columbus, the final game of the regular season for both of these teams. All right, let's take a break and we're going to move it on into the Sun South John Deere first period intermission report. When we come back, we'll have a look back at the scoring for you. An out of town scoreboard update and a whole lot more. Stay tuned. There's more coming your way. This is Columbus River Dragons Hockey. Here he comes, boys. Sure is beautiful. Here it is, boys. Who's ready to put it to work? Me. Me. There's only one way to settle this. Rock. Where'd he come from? I win. Never saw him coming. Must be the camo. Drive off in a new John Deere from SunSouth right now with 0% financing on select models. SunSouth, equipment for those that do. We all dream, but dreams quickly become distant memories unless we do something about it. Do everything in our power to learn to lead. At Troy University, we teach everyone to be leaders in their field. We're dedicated to teaching a new generation to lead change. Tim Hortons has a new $6 breakfast bundle with a mouthwatering breakfast sandwich, a golden hash brown with a small hot or iced coffee, and a classic donut made for your me time. Oh, and yours too. The $6 breakfast bundle at your neighborhood Tim's. Just the two of us. We can make it if we try. Just the two of us. Get two entrees and an appetizer for $25 only at Applebee's. Hi-ho, hi-ho, your gas is getting low, but you're in luck, pull your car or truck into Zelmo, Zelmo, Zelmo's. This month at Zelmo's, all Celsius energy drinks, two for four dollars. But you're in luck, pull your car or truck into Zelmo, Zelmo, Zelmo's. Always clean, always fast, always friendly. Zelmo Zip In, fueling life's passions for 20 years. Here he comes, boys. Sure is beautiful. Here it is, boys. Who's ready to put it to work? Me. Me. There's only one way to settle this. Rock. Where'd he come from? I win. Never saw him coming. 
Must be the camo. Drive off in a new John Deere from SunSouth right now with 0% financing on select models. SunSouth, equipment for those that do. We all dream, but dreams quickly become distant memories unless we do something about it. Do Dragons. I don't know that Columbus had that many shots, but I also don't know that Carolina had that many shots, so I guess we'll just kind of go on with a wink and a smile and just nod our heads at the, the shots on goal there. So first period, and again, the hometown uh, Thunderbirds with that 14 on the board and Columbus 15. And I think an interesting first period from a standpoint of the ebb and flow of the energy in that one. Carolina did get the only power play of the frame. They didn't score on it. Probably could have been a couple more penalties handed out both ways, but at least in the early part of this contest here tonight, they're going to let the boys play and uh, try to decide it themselves rather than having referees get involved in this one, which I don't necessarily mind. Uh, is not the worst thing in the world, I don't think, but, you know, just the question you always ask in those situations is, okay, well, how much is too much, and when do the calls actually kick in? And that, you know, becomes the issue a little bit later in the game. But we're not to that point yet. So right now for the River Dragons, I think they're just uh, maybe regrouping a little bit is the best way to look at it right now for them. Uh, they definitely have to do a little bit of regrouping because this team right now down one nothing. Uh, I really did feel like the balance of power in that period belonged to Carolina. I felt like they had the momentum. Uh, they were really taking the play to the River Dragons and Columbus at times. Uh, the goal that was scored, which we're going to talk about here in just a moment, Columbus kind of sat back a little bit and uh, gave Carolina too much time and space. And it's funny when you always talk about those types of things like time and space. How do you take away time and space? Well, Baker, when he comes in over the left side, ends up picking up the puck at center, and I think he intercepted a pass, if I'm correct, uh, on my memory on that one, but just walks back in over the line. He's on the left side, and the Thunderbirds are making a change. There's only one person there. The River Dragons had three or four people back, but they were unable to, or not unable, they were certainly able. They just didn't apply any pressure to Baker. They let him sit up top the whole time, and John Butita comes steaming into the offensive zone. He gets fed the pass and just blasts it by Colgan. But Columbus had three or four guys back in the zone. They just sat back. And I think defensively for the River Dragons, when I look at this team all season, um, very aggressive, obviously, offensively, not afraid to rush the puck, jump into the play, support offensively very well, and some good awareness from the defense coming back and the forwards back-checking. And again, there was the defensive awareness there from the standpoint of there were guys back, but the passivity of just letting Carolina have that time and space, be able to sit there, nobody really pressured, uh, maybe a little miscommunication. The player who did come over to pressure was Slahetka, who is the offside defenseman on that play. Normally he's playing that left side. He was a guy who ended up coming over, and I don't know if that's a product of maybe because there was a change in progress. But uh, it just... It's little things like that, those little mistakes, uh, the little moments in the game where the River Dragons, you want to see them clean that up. And that's what the focus of the weekend is. And so when we, we talked with Boomer about, you know, what do you want to do with this weekend? And his discussion of things about how this team wants to go about moving into the playoffs. And again, granted, you're resting some guys tonight. There's some bumps and some bruises. You're healing some guys. But Columbus... That is really, to me, that's what I'm underscoring as far as, hey, they need to clean those issues up. That's what wins in the playoffs. Uh, you don't see teams scoring nine goals a game in the playoffs at any level. It gets tougher. It gets more competitive. Defense wins championships. And that's what Columbus needs to make sure they're doing is cleaning up their own end, and it's what Boomer's been preaching all year. Hey, we're going to score four, which they will. The River Dragons absolutely can score their four, but they only want to give up two. And that's the focus. You have to focus more on your own end and, and taking care of that business. So the only goal of the period, 7-0-1. It was Butita from Baker. It was an even strength marker. And it's 1-0 here at the Fairgrounds Arena in favor of Carolina. Shots 15-14 in favor of the River Dragons. Power plays. Columbus did not have one in the first period. 
and the Thunderbirds are currently 0 for 1. We're going to take a break. When we come back here in the in the Sun South John Deere first period intermission report, we're going to have a look at the out of town school board. Golf fans, don't worry, I got you covered with some Masters updates. First round of play, a little delayed getting underway today, but yeah, they got into it. And so we'll uh, tell you about that and a whole lot more when we return in just a moment. 20 minutes in, one nothing Thunderbirds. This is River Dragons Hockey. Here he comes, boys. Sure is beautiful. Here it is, boys. Who's ready to put it to work? Me. Me. There's only one way to settle this. Rock. Where'd he come from? I win. Never saw him coming. Must be the camo. Drive off in a new John Deere from SunSouth right now with 0% financing on select models. SunSouth, equipment for those that do. At Jack Houston Memorial Hospital, our focus is you. Even though we performed more than 1,300 joint replacements last year, we treat you like you are our only patient. Your surgeon explains your joint replacement, so nothing is a surprise. Our team knows your treatment plan and we work together to get you back on your feet again. That's why our hospital is recognized year after year as a leader in patient satisfaction and quality of care. Jack Houston Memorial Hospital, excellence always. Let's go! Woo! Woo! Yeah! Football time! Set the tone! Kyle, tell your shoes, tell your shoes. Yeah, good job! Woo! Yeah! Grab a Pepsi Wild Jerry and get wild. We're always going a million different directions. But Kinetic Credit Union makes it easy for all of us to stay connected all in one place. With the Kinetic mobile app, we both can monitor our accounts on the go. We can create account alerts so we know when there's a change. Apply for a loan or credit card. We can even open a new account. Plus, you can quickly pay bills, transfer money, or make a deposit anytime, anywhere. Kinetic makes our life a whole lot easier. Kinetic Credit Union, the energy for your dreams. My dog, Georgette, was diagnosed with cancer. After her treatment, we would pass Chick-fil-A. I started seeing Mr. Brian often. She would get her little treat of whipped cream. We recognize each other, Georgette and I do. That particular day, Elaine pulls up. She said, Georgette is cancer free. I came around the corner with Georgette in my car, saw all the employees out there just like clapping and cheering. I started getting really emotional because I was just like, that's so nice. We love all our customers that come through. <laughs> this one just happens to have four legs. Congratulations, Georgette. <laughs> Merch.com. Back here in the Sun South John Deere first intermission report. Tom Callahan here with you, and it's time for us to take a look at the Zelmo Zip in out of town scoreboard. Zelmo's has been fueling life's passions since 1999. Tonight in the FPHL, only one other game, and they're just about to get it underway at the Raisin Canes River Center. The Baton Rouge Zydeco hosting the Mississippi Seawolves. The Seawolves, of course, the River Dragons' first round playoff opponent. We will see them in game one on the road in Mississippi next Wednesday, the 17th. So looking forward to getting the postseason underway. In the NHL, the Buffalo Sabres are out in front of the Washington Capitals 2-1. That one late in the second period. Also late in the second period, Florida Panthers have now taken a 2-0 lead over the Columbus Blue Jackets. Flyers still leading the Rangers halfway through the second, 2-1 Philadelphia. Up there, Penguins 3-2 leading the Red Wings halfway through the second. Lightning with a 2-1 lead on the Senators. Leafs 4-3 over the Devils in a slugfest there. That's also in the second. At the first intermission, the Canadians with a 1-0 lead over the Islanders. Jets 1-0 up over the Stars. 10 o'clock puck drop tonight. Sharks are at the Kraken. 10-30, Flames are at the Kings. Major League Baseball, only two games going on right now. End of the seventh, Philadelphia Phillies up 5-0 on the Pittsburgh Pirates. And in the bottom of the fifth, the Red Sox 2-1 leading the Baltimore Orioles. Finals from earlier today, the Mets beat the Braves 16-4. Royals 13-3 over the Astros. 
Athletics 1-0 over the Rangers. And also postponed by the weather today, Twins at Tigers and Brewers at Reds. And the Masters going on round one, incomplete. They started late because of the weather, rainy weather in the area here. And so some golfers did get through their rounds today, including current leader Bryson DeChambeau, who fired a 65, seven under. Scotty Scheffler, one shot off the pace, 66, and a minus six carded for him. Now through 15 holes, Nikolai Holgard has a minus five on the board. Danny Willett in at four under, Max Homa, Still out on the course at four under through 13. And then a host of players at minus three and minus two. Two of those are in Ryan Fox, Cameron Davis, bull shot three under 69. Uh, Tyrell Hatton is three under through 14 holes. And so the uh, final, or not the final round, but the uh, first round will be continued tomorrow morning once they wrap up play. Then they'll go right into the second round, and they figure with the weather clearing, they should be able to get back to normal by Sunday uh, for the final round. So they shouldn't have to finish up Saturday's third round Sunday morning. They figure they're going to be done with the third round on Saturday night and then be able to go for just a normal Sunday round. And uh, at this point, the weather, at least right now, the weather looks like it's going to hold for that uh, for the Masters Championship. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it's all going to come down on Masters Sunday. One of the uh, more exciting times in the golf world if you're a golf fan whatsoever. Here it's 1-0. Thunderbirds in the lead over the Columbus River Dragons. John Bouti to the goal. And Columbus, don't forget, in the playoffs, they've wrapped up home ice all the way through and uh, have taken the FPHL title. And again, if you're just joining us, uh, the River Dragons resting some players again here tonight. Rookie defenseman Hugh Anderson, I know, under the weather, not on the trip. Justin McDonald did not make the trip here to Carolina. Uh, Brian Moore, Kyle Moore's older brother, has come in and signed a four-game PTO with the team, and he is in the lineup here tonight as well. And uh, also it's a rest night for Austin Doe, who is on the trip, but just not playing in the game here this evening. So... All right, we'll take a break. When we come back, we will be into second period action. That's it for our Sun South John Deere first period intermission report. 20 minutes into it. It's one of the Carolina. Stay tuned. There is plenty more hockey action coming your way. This is River Dragons Hockey. Dragons. Just the two. Get two entrees and an appetizer for $25 only at Applebee's. At Beam, we take pride in being a part of our community, and we're committed to seeing it grow. We continually volunteer with organizations that are making a difference. Together, we are building a better community while building the best internet that exceeds the technology of metropolitan cities. But more importantly, one that connects us all. We want to ensure reliability. So for this reason, we're willing to go the extra mile. We aim to provide the community with high quality internet and cable services because we live here too. Because at Beam, community is not just a place. It's the way we do business. Winter is upon us. We must prepare. Cold and darkness will spread across the land. The nights will be long. Hey, what are you guys doing? Air Force is here to fix the heat. Don't let winter leave you out in the cold. Call Air Force Heating and Air now for our special $79 AC gas furnace or heat pump tune-up, only for a limited time. Air Force Heating and Air is always here for you. At Jack Houston Memorial Hospital, our focus is you. Even though we performed more than 1,300 joint replacements last year, we treat you like you are our only patient. Your surgeon explains your joint replacement, so nothing is a surprise. Our team knows your treatment plan and we work together to get you back on your feet again. That's why our hospital is recognized year after year as a leader in patient satisfaction and quality of care. Jack Houston Memorial Hospital, excellence always. What? 
Tim Hortons has a new $6 breakfast bundle with a mouthwatering breakfast sandwich, a golden hash brown with a small hotter iced coffee, and a classic donut made for your me time. Oh, and yours too, the $6 breakfast bundle. Here he comes, boys. Sure is beautiful. Here it is, boys, who's ready to put it to work? Me. me. There's only one way to settle this. Rock. Where'd he come from? I win. Never saw him coming. Must be the camo. Drive off in a new John Deere from SunSouth right now with 0% financing on select models. SunSouth, equipment for those that do. All right, we are back here at the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds Arena. Tom Callahan here with you. Second period action coming up here in just a moment. And this season, the second period is presented by WOW Internet. Proud to sponsor the Columbus River Dragons this season. Team up with WOW for fast home internet for $30 per month. It's a good deal for good sports fans. Go Dragons! Also want to remind you that you can save big right now at River City Swing Sets, your local Gorilla Play Sets authorized showroom, offering lifetime warranty swing sets and basketball goals, swings, slides, and more. Check out RiverCitySwingSets.com for the full lineup and get your big save at River City Swing Sets with free installation on any swing set purchased by saying, Go River Dragons! All right, second period action about to get underway, five on five. In fact, we've only had one power play in the opening 20 of this game, and that belonged to Carolina. And they were 0 for 1 with a man advantage, so the River Dragons will roll right to left in front of our broadcast location here for the second. Get everybody collected here, and then we'll drop the puck and get it underway. Looks like we're about ready. Wickline, Jamaif, and Swan up front to start period number two. Layton and Shankarik on defense. Face off is one back by the Thunderbirds. Carolina will start by dumping it in. Colgan can't catch up with it behind the net. Around to the right point, Pastuka sends it deep. Shankarik around the far side. Wickline on the roller, moves it ahead, and here comes Jamaif through center. Jamaif up the right side, Swan going to the net. Shot it on goal, blocker, save, rebound. Layton fired it wide on the stick side. Jamaif on it, feeds the right point. Shakarik backing up a shot. That's punched way out of play by the blocker of Cavallari. And the faceoff will stay inside. The Thunderbirds end of things. Looks like the birds will change. River Dragons leave Jamaif, Wickline, Swan out there. Jamaif over to the right side. Wickline will take this face off. Finally, they drop it. Thunderbirds win it back. Here's Firth on the near side around to Baker on the wing. Pass through center, missed. That should be icing, and they wave it off. Leighton after it. They'll leave it back for Shinkarik. Shinkarik looks up the left side. Swan tipping it on ahead to Jamaev. He'll fling it into the left wing corner. Firth watched by Wickline. Pushed it behind the net. Kennedy out the far side. Thunderbirds break up the left wing. Butina through center. Lost the puck there. Turned back for Wickline right side. He's up one on one. Curls waiting for help. River Dragons were changing. Puck turned over and Kennedy will set it up behind the Thunderbirds net. Out the right side, and a pass left behind. Moore to the left wing. Kyle Moore up top. Down low for the one time. Cavalier to his left, shuts that Hunter shot down, and it's kicked out of play. Well, the faceoff will stay inside the zone as Kyle Moore examines his skate. Faceoff will be to the far side, left of Cavalier. So Moore, Brian Moore, Kyle Moore, Ryan Hunter out there. Along with Slahetka and Popoff. Hunter in for the faceoff. Tied up and pulled back by Carolina. 
Up the left side is Bioni with a pass. That stretch missed. Slahetka hustling will beat it out for icing. And the faceoff once again back into the Thunderbirds end of things here. 129 into the second period. 1-0. Thunderbirds leading it. Hunter again in for the faceoff. Tied up in the linesman skates. Now fed back to the right point. Pop off pressured. Has to dump it around the wall. Kyle Moore to the near side. Puck went off a skate. Kicked right back behind the net. But Thunderbirds will go out the left wing now. They'll wedge that one ahead. Slahetke in after it. Will he get in there? Yes. That's icing once again against Carolina. Columbus is going to change up the forward unit here. But again, the Thunderbirds must keep the same five skaters out there. So out steps Bersani, Storjahan, Petrantonio, Bockwell, and Underwood. Actually, pardon me, it's Bockwell and Shankarik that are out there together right now. And, ooh, draw right back in on goal. Cavalieri had to make a save on the faceoff win. Puck played around. Schnapp will clear it out. Bockwell chasing. And all the way behind his own net. That allows a couple of Thunderbirds to get off the ice. Columbus resetting the breakout, and for the most part now, the Thunderbirds have changed out their players caught out there on the icing. 2.15 gone here in the second one. I think Carolina in the lead is Keeley trying to move it back in left side. Here's Pastuka in with a shot, deflects behind the net. Bockwell up the left wing side. Storja will tip it out. And down the ice, no icing here. Columbus up on the forecheck. Bersani trying to steal it back off. Storjahan on the left side, but now fed ahead. Pastuka does get it out of the zone. Petrantonio fires it right back in. And past the left ear of Bersani was knocked down. There's a shot off the outside of the net. Storjahan on the rebound up top. Jamava shot. Cavallari stops it at the right post. Good positional save right there for Cavallari. And Bersani is hurt on the far side. As he's hobbling off the ice, not sure what happened. He was tied up in behind the play with one of the Thunderbirds. That was a behind the play scrape. And Bersani comes off clearly limping. He's kind of made it off under his own power. He's all right, but no penalty called there. Face-off will be to the left of the Carolina goal. This time it's Wickline, Jamaif, and Krupp with Bersani out. And the draw eventually ends up back at the right point. Leighton on it there. He's got a lay in a shot. Glove save Cavalieri, and he holds on. So we will do this again. Wickline, Krupp, Jemayev. Wickline again for the faceoff. This time the Thunderbirds win it back. Firth around the boards. A bouncer to the point. Kept in there nicely by Layton. Fed to the near corner. Jemayev leaving it on the cycle. Wickline forced to go back for it. Trying to shake Keplinger in the corner. Keplinger knocks him down. Krupp on the near side in the slots. Laheka backdoor feed. And this save by Cavallari who holds a rebound. Slahetka actually tried a slap shot that he healed almost into the perfect backdoor feed towards Jemayev. But because it slowed down so much, Cavalieri was able to get a piece of it and then hang on. But Columbus has not gotten a bounce yet in this hockey game. It's 1-0 Carolina. 3.20 into the second. And Again, the chances are still there for Columbus, but they're just not getting the breaks. Hunter in for the faceoff between the Moore brothers. Thunderbirds win it back. They'll try up the right side. Here's Cholek through center. They'll dump it around the rim. Leighton in the far side corner, able to move it ahead. Kyle Moore, his pass ahead, deflected up in the air. Now Brian Moore comes down with it on the left wing. 
Into the slot, Hunter in with a shot. Cavalier with a blocker save of the near post. Kyle Moore into the left wing corner after the loose puck. Hunter into the pile. Ryan Hunter tied up on the half boards. Fed to the blue line and just out. Layton will sweep it back into the zone in the backhand. Columbus tags it up. Here's Hunter forcing to play back on the far side. Sent around the rim, but not out. Kept in there by Kyle Moore. Ends up behind the net again. And now in behind the play once again. They're going to take both players off. Hunter saying he didn't do anything, but Hunter and Bioni are both going to the penalty box. Of course, the fans are going to be upset when they find out that there was coincidental penalties there. Four thirteen, time of the penalties. And we'll have some four on four here. Face off will stay inside the zone. See who Columbus is going to put out there here. They're going to leave the Moore brothers out there, Kyle and Brian, along with Bach, Will, and Popoff. They both get roughing. Puck is cleared down the ice. Popoff back. Should be an icing call. No, they wave it off. Bach, Will on the near side. Rolling puck feeds it back to Popoff. River Dragons look to break the zone here. Ahead on to the left side. Here's Moore in over the line, leaving it for Bockwell. Couldn't catch up with it. Puck not out, though. Kept in left point again by Bockwell. Tried to feed it down to Brian Moore. Couldn't get it down there. Now Salak the other way. In on the right side. Stops the half board. Salak, and it's shot by Kennedy. Nice right pad save there by Colgan. Fed across, and now a chance for a break. Left side, here's Moore moving in. Brian Moore hooked up from behind. Fed it back in front. Cavalier will grab it. And, oh, it's a hooking call. That could have been a penalty shot. Maybe should have been a penalty shot. But instead, the River Dragons will get their first, the loft power play of the game. Hooking will be the call. We've only seen one penalty shot in total this year. And you don't see them too often at this level, but I thought perhaps we were going to see one there. But instead, the River Dragons, 5.04 into the second period, going on to the power play. And uh, we're going to take a break. We'll come back with more here in just a moment. Second period action brought to you by WOW Internet, River Dragons Hockey. River Dra <laughs> Get upfront surprise free pricing with Wi-Fi modem included and no data caps. Plus bundle internet 300 with YouTube TV for just $92.99 per month for 12 months with auto pay and paperless billing. Wow. get upfront surprise free pricing with Wi-Fi modem included and no data caps all for only $30 a month with auto pay and paperless billing the energy for your dreams all right we are back here for second period action Here's the River Dragons heading on to the law power play for the first time tonight the law features live music every Friday and Saturday night show your River Dragons ticket stub at the loft for a two for one deal on cover. Only at the loft. Proud partner of River Dragons Hockey. 504, time of the hooking call against Keplinger. It's a four on three power play, so plenty of ice out there. Kennedy wheeling with it, trying to feed it ahead towards Schnapp. Schnapp 
able to bounce it ahead and out. Shinkarik trying to get back on Schnapp. And he will feed it on back to the defense. Carolina on it. Kennedy's going to rag it all the way behind his own net. And now they'll play it ahead. River Dragons break up the pass at center. Petrantonio with a feed on the right side. Shinkarik has to get quickly to it right side. He does. Feeds it across. Petrantonio takes it off the dasher. He'll look up top. Shinkarik to the far dot. Storjahan. Storjahan tried to feed it across. It was picked off. And Pistuka clears. Shinkarik back the other way. Right side. Petrantonio carries it in. He'll leave it off onto the right wing side. Columbus going back to setting it up. Shinkarik, Petrantonio into the slot. Here's a chance. Backdoor feed. Storjahan save. Cavallari. And he holds on. Storjahan tried to jam that one through the five hole, but it was shut down. Ryan Hunter set to come out here. It's going to be five on four in three seconds and then 52 seconds of five on four power play for the River Dragons. 6-10 into the second one of the Thunderbirds. Brian Moore able to win that draw back. Now we're five on four with a power play. Slahetka moving it across. Blockwell to the left half wall to Kyle Moore. To Slahetka back to Kyle Moore. Looking in front, cross ice, Slahetka. To the right side, Brian Moore at the right point. He's got room over there. Into the backdoor feed, Kyle Moore, cross ice, gets it across again, but off the skate. Moore leaves it for Hunter on the right side. Up top to Slahetka. Slahetka, his shot whipped wide of the net. Moore into the slot, Hunter over, and the off angle, Brian Moore couldn't one time. Brian Moore looks up top, Slahetka. Slahetka back to Moore, his one time shot around the glass to the point, Slahetka trying to hold it in. Kyle Moore tied up over there. Stop is going to get it down the ice. Five seconds of the power play, that's it. Stays 1-0 Thunderbirds as they kill it off. Keplinger out of the box. Columbus back into the right wing. They lose the puck just over the line, but Slaheka steps up to hold it in for a moment. River Dragons right now. More pressuring right side. Puck swung away to center, though. Keplinger on it there. He'll move it on the left wing. Shinkarik back after it. On to the near shot. It ends up with Hunter. Jump back in now. Thunderbirds changing it up as Cole going to leave it for Layton. Layton out the right side. Feeds it back. Now gets it back at center. Trying to tip it on. Look at Shinkarik. Picked off again. Thunderbirds back in. Kepling her right side with a wrist shot. Missed the net. Butita feeds it in behind the net. Shinkarik up the far wall, picked off. Thunderbirds are just waiting for it. There's a shot from the far side by Keplinger wide. It's almost like Carolina knows exactly what Columbus is going to do, and they're just in the right place to pick these passes off all the time. Cross ice, they pick it off. Clear up the wall, they pick it off. Brian Moore, left side, feeds it across onto the right wing, a bouncer into the corner for Bersani. Up to the right point, pop off, fakes a shot, now he lets it go. Butita blocks it. Right wing corner. Salak on the far side. Jemayev leaning on him as he comes to center. Salak pulled down. Crowd wants a penalty there. Jemayev will move it back. Bersani knocked down from behind as the puck dumped in. No icing. Bersani up on the left side. Tying it up. Puck to the left point. Pop off. Can't keep it in. It comes over the line. Jemayev sends it back in though. Columbus right back up on the forecheck. Now it's stolen away behind the net. Swan centering, but Cavallari deflected it with a goal stick before it got through to Bersani. Pastuca had it swept away by Bockwill. Pastuca up into the right side of the River Dragons end of things here. 9-10 gone here in the second period. 1-0 Thunderbirds. Dumped in by Bersani. Columbus to the change. Quickly back. Carolina left side. They'll move in. A centering feed. Tapped away by Bockwill. Pastuca into the left wing corner. Salak over there, tied up with Bockwill. Petrantonio in there as well. Pulled out by Popoff. Popoff behind his own net, around the right side to Swan. Back to Popoff to Petrantonio. Trying to lead it ahead, but turned back by Carolina. Salak the other way. 
In on the left side, there's a shot tipped out of play into the netting. 13 seconds shy of the halfway mark here of period number two, one nothing. Thunderbirds in the lead, each team 0 for 1 with a man advantage in this one. While we've got a moment, let's take a break. 10 seconds along the network for station identification. You're listening to River Dragons Hockey on WKCN HD2 Fort Moore, Columbus and W295AY Crystal Valley. 1069 really rocks. Puck in the River Dragons end of things. Face off is pushed into the corner. Columbus pulls it out of the pile, looking to skate it ahead of Shinkarik. Left side to Stor Jahan. And over the line, the pass deflected behind Wickline. And Keeley will dump it down the ice, chased by Slahetka. Slahetka backhands it around towards Storjahan. Didn't get a lot on it. Puck ends up at the right point. Kennedy stepping down. Ran into traffic. Cleared up to Wickline. Wickline bounces through a check but lost the puck. Tossed right back in by the Thunderbirds. Colgan not to handle it behind the net. Nine and a half to go here in period number two. Still 1-0 Carolina. River Dragons use the glass to get it out to center. Punched back the other way by Kennedy. And Shinkarik back after it again into his own end. He's got time, though. Thunderbirds changing. Slahetka to center. His pass tipped on in. Or was it? It was. No icing. Puck in the left side corner. Wickline arriving with a thump. Here's Storjahan off the net. Tried to play it to himself, but he got rubbed out there behind the play. Baker out up the right side. Kennedy back across to Baker. Petrantonio intercepts. Now Storjahan. Left side, moving in, he's got more in front, trying to feed it across, but nice job to break up the play first. Leighton tried to step in, couldn't keep it in now. Two on two the other way, Boutine up on the left side, wrist shot, he missed the net. Around it goes towards the point, Ryan Hunter. Trying to move it out. And now here come the River Dragons again, Kyle Moore in over the line, leaving for Brian Moore into the slot, cutting to his left, Brian Moore back door feed. Hunter had his stick tied up and couldn't shoot. Hunter to the right side, half wall. Thunderbirds able to move it out. Baker to center. Keplinger tried to backhand it along. Cut off by Bockwell, but now Baker stole it back. Walks into the slot on the backhand. Couldn't get a shot away. Puck ends up at the point. Penalty coming against Columbus. Shot on goal is caught by Colgan. 8-13 to go in the second, but Columbus shorthanded when we come back. 1-0 Carolina in the lead. This is River Dragons Hockey. River Dragons Hockey. <laughs> With WOW, you now get upfront surprise-free pricing with Wi-Fi modem included and no data caps, all for only $30 a month with auto pay and paperless billing. WOW. Just the two of us. We can make it if we try. Just the two of us. Just the two of us. Get two entrees and an appetizer for $25 only at Applebee's. <laughs> Get upfront surprise free pricing with Wi Fi modem included and no data caps. Plus, bundle internet 300 with YouTube TV for just $92.99 per month for 12 months with auto pay and paperless billing. Wow. What? Tim Hortons has a new $6 breakfast bundle? With a mouth watering breakfast sandwich, a golden hash brown with a small hotter iced coffee, and a classic donut made for your me time. Oh, and yours too. The $6 breakfast bundle at your neighborhood. Kinetic Credit Union, the energy for your dreams. Back here, second period action. Slashing the call against Parker Lane as he goes into the Abercrombie bonding penalty box. 11.47, time of the penalty. River Dragon shorthanded for the second time tonight. And they are one for one on the penalty kill here in this one. One nothing, Carolina leads it. So far, John Boutita, the only goal of the game. Drawn to the right of Brendan Colgan. A better period so far for Columbus than the first, but they just haven't broken through yet. Face off is controlled. Carolina stepping up after it into the corner. Pop off knocks down Keplinger. Lost a mitt. Had to scoop it up. Puck free to the near side. Thunderbirds on it. Up top. Pastuka back across here. On to the near wing. Kruger into the right side corner. Gets it back in the near dot. His shot shoulder save. Colgan. Swung around to the half wall on the right side. 
Seven and a half to go here in the second. One of the Thunderbirds down to 120 to go on the power play. Carolina hanging on to the puck. Right side, Keplinger up top. Butina, roller. Quickly back, Keplinger hopped over his stick. Puck into the slot, dumped back to the right half wall. Keplinger feeds it down low, a chance in front, and that one is knocked away. Kramer's shot was deflected on the way through. Pop off over after it. Slahetka there, pop off. Trying to muscle it free. Puck stays in the corner. Now fed around to the right point. Butita, or pardon me, Pastuka, keeping it to Keplinger right side into the corner. And once again, Kramer on it. Right half wall, Keplinger. Time ticks down to the power play. 42 seconds to go. Up top, Pastuka neared out. One time shot, save made Colgan. Rebound in front, cleared towards the line, and it rolls over. And Columbus needs a change of the penalty killers here if they can. Keplinger back into the right side. Slaheka ran into him, hooked him around, and Bersani out with a puck. Now penalty coming up on the Thunderbirds. Well, that's... Well, wait a minute. Somebody just picked up on Sportsmanlike, and it might have been Slaheka. That's weird because the whistle did not blow and Bersani had the puck and it should have much earlier. I thought, I actually thought for a minute because of the way the River Dragons carried it out that it, the penalty for some reason was going to go against Carolina but I think Slahetka also picked up either an extra two or an extra ten. 13.30 is the time of the penalty here. So holding was the initial indication, but the question is, does he pick up another two or does he pick up 10? And that's what they're trying to sort out. Right now they have it listed actually as holding for Slahetka unsportsmanlike for Keplinger for two minutes. So it's going to even itself out. Well, that explains why the fans are so upset. And now Keplinger is being sent to the locker room. So he might have picked up 10. Or a game. Let's see what uh, this ends up being. Right now, it stays. So it's five on three. He must have picked up only 10. That's not a two for Keplinger. Instead, it's five on three for 18 seconds. And the River Dragons win this draw. So Layton's going to come out of that Abercrombie bonding penalty box here in a couple of seconds. Thunderbirds, there's a one-time and a stick sawn in half on the one-time by Firth. Puck behind the net, Thunderbirds on it. Layton's out of the box. And he will step back in to help kill this penalty off. Tips a pass away from Keeley. So now it's five on four for the next minute, 35 seconds. One nothing, Carolina. Keplinger gets the gate for an unsportsmanlike, so that's at least 10 if not a game. And now it's Sorjahan on the puck. He'll fling it on down the ice. I'm guessing Keplinger probably getting a 10, but I guess we'll find out. Thunderbirds try to step back in here with the puck. They rag it around to the right side here. Salak, the right half wall, up to the right point. Curls, looking, leaving it off up top. It's fed across the blue line. Pastuka to the far side. Dot Baker, a shot save. Colgan, no rebound. And Colgan didn't like Schnapp right there on the doorstep. Gets in a little bit of a shoving match. And now here we go. Pop off and Schnapp are going to wrestle their way to the glass. Are the mitts going to come off? They go down to the ice without the gloves coming off. Well, they're probably going to pick up a couple of minutes each anyway. Five seventeen left to go in the period.
Now we'll let them keep sorting everything out here. Not banging his stick on the glass, trying to get the referee's attention. Schnapp is still yelling at the referee. Well, they're still trying to figure this out here. There's definitely been some animated discussion. Schnapp ends up with an extra two on his side. So we have 48 seconds of four on four coming up here with 517 left to go unless they just haven't put up pop off, which is entirely possible. But Schnapp man picked up an extra two if he was uh, talking a little too much there. And indeed, I think he did. I think Schnapp picked up an extra two. So that means the River Dragons will end up with an abbreviated power play here. The faceoff's going to come outside the zone and all the way down the ice into the Thunderbirds end. So Schnapp gets two for slashing is what's listed here. Face off to the left of the Thunderbirds net. Four on four hockey for the next 45 now seconds as the clock is rolling. Here's Salak moving it up the left side to Pastuka. Blockwell curling back in behind his own net, feeds it around to the near side, and puck to the right point. Kennedy holding it in. Left wing to the open spot. Here's Firth with a shot in, blocker down to play by Colgan. And that's going to get us to our final break of the period. Second period action is brought to you by Wow Internet. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. This is Columbus River Dragons Hockey. <laughs> With WOW, you now get upfront surprise-free pricing with Wi-Fi modem included and no data caps. All for only $30 a month with auto pay and paperless billing. WOW. Here he comes, boys. Sure is beautiful. Here it is, boys. Who's ready to put it to work? Me. Me. There's only one way to settle this. Rock. Where'd he come from? I win. Never saw him coming. Must be the camo. Drive off in a new John Deere from SunSouth right now with 0% financing on select models. SunSouth, equipment for those that do. Good internet. Get upfront surprise free pricing with Wi-Fi modem included and no data caps. Plus bundle internet 300 with YouTube TV for just $92.99 per month for 12 months with auto pay and paperless billing. All right, we are back here in the second period intermission, or no, second period. We haven't gotten to the intermission yet. I'm just trying to fast forward, folks. Don't mind me. Second period presented by WOW Internet. Proud to sponsor the River Dragons this season. Team up with WOW for fast home internet for $30 a month. It's a good deal for good sports fans. Go Dragons! Okay, so we have a four on four for 21 seconds, then an abbreviated River Dragons, the loft power play. It will be the River Dragon's second kick of the can here tonight. So Schnapp got uh, two for slash, two for rough. Popoff got two for rough. That's how we got to where we got to. And Keplinger is out on a 10-minute misconduct right now. So 
It's been an interesting period, but it's not getting any calmer. And Columbus just killing some time, and now out of the box is Slahetka, and Columbus has their power play. Up the left side, here's Kyle Moore. Had it cleared away. It ends up back with Layton. Layton getting a little power play time out there, the rookie defenseman. Up the left side, here's Ryan Hunter into the zone. Petrantonio will shove it down low. Cavalieri out to play. It scoots between his skates around to the right side. Brian Moore holding it in up top. Fires it across. Petrantonio top of the near circle. Petrantonio. Into the left side corner, Kyle Moore. Moore tried to step around one, had it taken away by Kennedy and sent down the ice. And now the other way here's Ryan Hunter, leaving it off for Layton. Layton crossing to his left at the line. High slot knocked off his stick into the corner, Layton up after it. And now it's picked up by Shinkarik. Cross ice feet over for the one time, and that's fanned on by Brian Moore. Around to the near side, Layton in the left corner. Left half wall, Moore, top of the circle, backdoor feed. Brian Moore looking in front, wanted to get it to Hunter. Had the puck taken away, but he battles to keep it in. Turned over to Hunter. He feeds up top. Here's Layton. Wrist shot, tipped over top of the net. Ends up in the right side corner. Moore getting into it over there, and now he's going to drop with Farmer. They're going to go, and Brian Moore gets a quick punch in, knocks him down. That was over pretty quickly. They didn't even really get it wound up. But Brian Moore got Farmer down fairly quickly on that one. 3.13 to go in the second. <laughs> Brian Moore giving it to the crowd on the way out. So five for fighting for both of them. 16:47 time of the penalty. The power play time has come off the clock. So the River Dragons back to five on five hockey here. They did not score on that the loft power play. Face off to the left of Cavalieri. Quick line, Chimaev Storjahan up front. They're going to throw the Thunderbird center out of the draw. It's pulled back and controlled by Carolina. Here's Clay Keeley in the corner, tied up by Wick line. Chimaev into that pile. Trying to move it along. Puck rolls free to the far side. And the Thunderbirds are able to flip it to the line off the skate of Shankarik. It'll bounce down the ice. Slahetka pressured, has to throw it away to an open wing back to center. Carolina trying to regroup quickly here, but they curl back in their own end. Salak will feed it back. And now Keeley trying to feed it back to him. It bounced and he has to take it behind the net. Storjahan on him all the way. Right side, Wickline played around to the right point. Down it goes in a race here. And it will not be an icing call. Kramer getting back there first, and he gets run into by Jamaev, and Jamaev's going to the box. Two twenty-four to go in this second period. Jamaev gets two for boarding. He goes into the Abercrombie bonding penalty box. 17.36 time of the penalty. 
Thunderbirds on the power play number three. River Dragons two for two in the kill tonight. And Jamaev might have picked up more than two. Right now it says two on the clock, but he's being escorted out. So I can only imagine perhaps he picked up five and a game or they still have a list there's a two minute minor on the score sheet so I don't know if he picked up ten no it is now it's five now five minute major So a major power play for the Thunderbirds. 2.24 to go here in the second period. It's still 1-0 Carolina. Thunderbirds will win it back to the right point. Here's Pistuca on it, and he's challenged at the line, and out it goes. Nice job by Bersani. Keeley will turn with it. Play Keeley. On to the right side. Pass that is dumped in around the wall. Colgan can't slow it down. I think it's just that five minutes for boarding. I don't think there's anything extra on there. Pistuca at the right point. He'll feed it up top. And now Thunderbird's going to work on the right side. Salak, his pass to the line is tipped out off the stick there. Is unable to keep it in with Pistuka. Salak. Pistuka right side. Kramer turns it in over the line, and it's sent right back down by Columbus, who are going to try to get at least a couple guys off the ice here. And now they will change out all four. Thunderbirds on to the right side. Here's Baker. Dumping into the corner. Pop off, chasing after it with Salak. Five and a major for boarding against Jamaev. Thunderbirds on the power play here. 106 to go in the second. 1-0 Carolina. Pass to the front of the net. Tip behind it. Butita after it. On the left side, he'll feed it up to Pastuka, middle of the blue line. His shot the flex of the corner. Butita on the puck far side. Feeds it up top, a rolling puck at the line. Poked away to the left side to Baker. Baker holding on at the left point. Challenged at the blue line. Somehow keeps it in. And two River Dragons on him. Nice job. That behind the net, Salak run into by Popov. Salak, far side corner, turning with it down there. Feeds it up to the left point. Backdoor chance and coming across to his left. Colgan made the save there. I think that was more of a pass from Kramer than anything. Head back down low, and a chance there. Pop off, blocked away. Puck comes to the left point to Baker. Across, and it's finally knocked out by Storjahan. He's got Hunter up with him going to the net. Storjahan into the high slot. Jim Carrick in with a shot. Blocked in front. Rebound, they score! Storjahan scores on the rebound. A shorthanded goal. The initial shot by Jim Carrick hit one of the Thunderbirds who was injured blocking the shot. And they're still down on the ice, but play continued, and the River Dragons score on the play. The goal will count. And so for Columbus, finally on the board with a shorthanded marker, their eighth shorthanded goal of the year, with only 6.2 seconds to go in the period. 19.03, time of the goal for Storjahan. Shinkarik will pick up the assist. And getting up after blocking that shot is Baker, but he is needing a little bit of help as he heads over towards the exit here. Doubled over in pain. Well, that's a tough one. Oh, you hate to see that. Yeah. 
And now, by the way, they've updated Jemayev to a match penalty. So the match carries with it the automatic game misconduct. So Alexander Jemayev is out. And there is the potential for more. That'll be reviewed. And the puck dropped. That's the end of the period. There were six seconds there. I'm kind of surprised that neither team really wanted to do much with it. Shinkarik actually tried to charge up with it, but we're into the intermission. And this game is in a very strange and awkward place right now. It's tied at one. There's two minutes, 36 seconds to go in the major, the match penalty against Jemayev for boarding. And now the River Dragons could lose Jemayev for even longer. I'm actually a little surprised, I will go ahead and say it. Didn't really think that was a match. I didn't actually think the collision was all that hard. I was surprised it was five and uh, as a five-minute major. Now that it's a match penalty, I'm really surprised. But here we are. So we have to navigate that. So for the River Dragons, you're down number 71 there for a while. You're going to be missing number 27, Brian Moore for the first couple minutes of the next period as he finishes out serving his fighting major. And depending on the, I, I think if Keplinger got 10 minutes, he should be back in the third for the Thunderbirds. And again, like I said, the game's just kind of in a weird spot right now. It, um, yeah, this one, it just something's a little bit off about this game. Tonight. And I know it's a, a rivalry game, and I know there's a lot of energy to it, as there always is, and these two teams don't like each other, and it always plays itself out. But this one just, I don't know. There's, there's something I can't quite put my finger on about it. I've seen thousands of games, and this one is off. And uh, I just, I really hope, first and foremost, that nobody gets hurt in this one, but second of all, it's just, uh, I don't know. Well, you know what? We'll just have to find out what uh, what Tom's energy is telling him about this third period by playing it, right? So uh, into the second period intermission we go while they chuck the pucks here in Winston-Salem at the fairgrounds. And uh, we will have a second period scoring wrap coming up for you in just a little bit. Plus, we've got our Zelmo Zippin' out of town scoreboard coming your way as well. So stay tuned. There is plenty to talk about in this one. But we are now tied at one. Shorthanded goal pulls the River Dragons back level with the Carolina Thunderbirds. So stay tuned. We're back with more in just a moment. Into the Shredaway second period intermission report. We go on River Dragons hockey. Lemon lime soda. You're looking well. I just needed something more refreshing, more crisp. I'm with Starry now. This is intense. He's so vulnerable. But I love you. Please. Ah, oh, buddy, it'll be okay. Ah! Or not. Huh? Starry does taste better. <laughs> My dog, Georgette, was diagnosed with cancer. 
after her treatment, we would pass Chick-fil-A. I started seeing Mr. Bryan often. She would get her little treat of whipped cream. We recognize each other, Georgette and I do. That particular day, Elaine pulls up. She said, Georgette is cancer free. I came around the corner with Georgette in my car, saw all the employees out there just like clapping and cheering. I started getting really emotional because I was just like, that's so nice. We love all our customers that come through. <laughs> this one just happens to have four legs. Congratulations, Georgette. We all dream, but dreams quickly become distant memories unless we do something about it. Do everything in our power to learn to lead. At Troy University, we teach everyone to be leaders in their field. We're dedicated to teaching a new generation to lead change. One River Road, located just across from the new VA hospital. This location has a drive through and is open six days a week. Tell us you heard this and receive 25% off your first visit. Wade Cleaners, since 1939. And we're back in the Shredaway second period intermission report. Tom Callahan here with you as we are through two periods of play in the Columbus River Dragons have tied things up with the Carolina Thunderbirds. As it's, I'll tell you what, it's been an intense hockey game here. The River Dragons right now at the end of the frame. It just it kind of, what an unusual finish I think to this one and we're, we're due for here because there have been penalties called. It's been testy. It's been cranky. But it's now at this point not, I don't know. I, it, I, again, I said it before the break. Just something feels off about this game right now. And I, I can't 100% put my finger on it. And I just I guess we're going to have to figure out which way it's all going to go by the end of it. But right now, Columbus is tied. And uh, the Boarding penalty, that's a match penalty for Jemayev, uh, which may cost the River Dragons uh, extra time with Jemayev. Of course, you know, I'm sure it'll be appealed um, by the River Dragons, but potentially without him for tomorrow night. Um, I mean, that's your, your second leading goal scorer on the team. And Columbus right now, though, did score while shorthanded on the major. They pushed ahead, and Columbus came in with time winding down in the second period. The pass came up to uh, Carter Shinkarik. And Shinkarik, the shot that was blocked, and went off Dawson Baker, who made his way off the ice eventually under his own power, but stayed down for some time. But the puck then free to Storjahan, who scores the shorthanded goal at 19.03. And right now they have the assists credited to Slahetka and Hunter. I know Shinkarik is due one of those. And I'm not sure if it was Slahetka or Hunter that would uh, pick up the other one. But either way, the shorthanded marker ties things up at one for the River Dragons. Shots in the period, believe it or not, fewer shots than we had in the first, even though it seemed like there was a lot more action in that second period. 11 for Columbus, 7 for the Carolina Thunderbirds. 26-21 in favor of Columbus through two periods of play. Power plays right now for both teams. So the Thunderbirds are working on their third and the row for two, but that third has two minutes, 36 seconds of the major to carry over here. And then the River Dragons are 0 for two with the man advantage right now in this game. So Zamboni getting out there as they try to clean up the sheet a little bit here and uh, our extended intermissions here tonight at the uh, Winston-Salem Fairgrounds Arena. And uh, I'll tell you what, the Zamboni's out there fairly early. I don't know what they're going to plan to do with the, the extra time here, but I guess the ice will have some time to cure before they go throwing anybody back out on it, which is not necessarily the worst thing in the world. And so we will take a break and come back with more here in just a moment. We've got a busy out-of-town school board, including if you're a golf fan, we'll update you on the Masters. Round one of golf's first major of the year is underway. Plus a busy night in the National Hockey League as well. 
Sabres and Caps just finishing up in uh, a bit of the rough stuff. But we'll tell you what happened in that one. And uh, uh, again, playoff implications abound everywhere in the NHL here this evening. And also Mississippi should be underway against Baton Rouge. We can update that for you. So come on back. We have plenty more coming your way. Shred away. Second period intermission report rolls on on Columbus River Dragons hockey. Dragons. my ex lemon lime soda you're looking well i just needed something more refreshing more crisp i'm a starry now this is intense he's so vulnerable but i love you please oh buddy it'll be okay <laughs> or not huh starry does taste better <laughs> My dog, Georgette, was diagnosed with cancer. After her treatment, we would pass Chick-fil-A. I started seeing Mr. Brian often. She would get her little treat of whipped cream. We recognize each other, Georgette and I do. That particular day, Elaine pulls up. She said, Georgette is cancer free. I came around the corner with Georgette in my car, saw all the employees out there just like clapping and cheering. I started getting really emotional because I was just like, that's so nice. We love all our customers that come through. <laughs> this one just happens to have four legs. Congratulations, Georgette. We all dream, but dreams quickly become distant memories unless we do something about it. Do everything in our power to learn to lead. At Troy University, we teach everyone to be leaders in their field. We're dedicated to teaching a new generation to lead change. And we're back here in the Shredaway second period intermission report. Tom Callahan here with you. 1-1 one, one tie on our hands. River Dragons and the Carolina Thunderbirds here tonight. Thanks for joining us, everybody, as the uh, River Dragons get the late equalizer with just over six seconds to go in period number two. It's a shorthanded effort. River Dragons are still shorthanded for two minutes, 36 seconds when they come back. It's a five-minute match penalty for boarding for Jemayeth and Columbus will try to get through the rest of that kill. But they did get their first goal of the game off of that situation. All right, and so Zelmos, which has been fueling life's passion since 1999, has been bringing you the out-of-town scoreboard all season long. One other game of the FPHL tonight. It's at the Raising Canes River Center. And the Mississippi Seawolves, after one period of play, have a 1-0 lead in that game. And we'll take a quick check of the old score sheet here to find out that Lucas Helland is the goal scorer from Kuznetsov. And Connor Lind on the power play. In the NHL, several games now going final. And it was uh, the Buffalo Sabres playing spoiler to the Washington Capitals tonight. They beat them 4-2. Not only did they beat them on the ice, but they beat them in the alley as well at the end of the game. Kind of a five-on-five -five square it off brawl. And uh, Capitol stars Tom Wilson and Max Pacioretty getting in fights. I know Tage Thompson was one of those involved. But the uh, Buffalo Sabres, despite only 17 shots on net, score four times, and they beat the Caps 4-2. And the Capitals are fighting for that wild card spot, trying to stay in it. Panthers shut out the Blue Jackets tonight, 4-0 in that one. How about the Flyers taking care of business against the New York Rangers? They're up 4-1 with three minutes to go in the third. 
and the Penguins and the Red Wings, both of these teams in the Eastern Conference wildcard hunt, 5-5 five, five tie. Three and a half minutes to go in the third period of that one. That one is going to come screaming down to a finish. As are the Devils and Maple Leafs, also tied at five late in the third period of that one. Senators and Lightning tied at two late in the third period. Halfway through in the third, Canadians 2-1 up on the Islanders. After two periods of play, the Jets have a 2-0 lead on the Stars. 10 o'clock tonight, Sharks are at the crack, and 10.30, Flames are at the Kings. Major League Baseball. Only one game still going on. Orioles 3-2 over the Red Sox. That's in the bottom of the eighth inning. Finals from earlier today. Mets 16-4 over the Braves. Royals 13-3 over the Astros. 1-0 Athletics beat the Rangers. 5-1 Phillies over the Pirates. And postponed because of the weather, the Twins and Tigers and Brewers and Reds. And the Masters Tournament. Round one started today, started late, so not everybody finished. But several players got their round in, including current leader Bryson DeChambeau. Who, uh, Bryson, Bryson DeChambeau, if I could say that correct. Late seven under with a 65 today. Scotty Scheffler, 66, a minus six. He's in second. Uh, Nikolai Hogard did not finish his round. He's through 15 holes, and he's at minus five in third place. Then tied for fourth, you've got Danny Willett, four under 68. Max Homa, four under through 13 holes. Then tied for sixth, Ryan Fox and Cameron Davis, both shot three under 69. And uh, Tyrell Hatton, minus three through 14 holes in that particular situation. Some of the other notables... Americans, Will Zalatoris and Patrick Reed are both two under. Zalatoris fired a 70. Reed is two under through 14. And Lucas Glover, one under. Tony Finau, Patrick Cantlay, one under. Rory McIlroy, one under. Tiger Woods, one under. He's through 13 holes. Sergio Garcia, an even 72. Justin Thomas, Xander Shoffley fired 72s today as well. Jason Day even through 13 holes. Brooks Kepka even through 11. Phil Mickelson plus 173 for him today. John Rahm plus 173. Justin Rose plus 173. Bubba Watson plus one through 15 holes. Adam Scott plus one through 13 holes. Dustin Johnson plus one through 10. Colin Morikawa plus one through 10 as well. Charles Schwartzel plus 274 for him. And just checking to see Mike Weir fit, did finish plus 274 for him today. Jordan Spieth plus two through 11 holes. VJ Singh, the former Masters champ, plus three, 75 today in the books for him. Zach Johnson, another Masters champ, plus 476. Ricky Fowler, plus 476. Hideki Matsuyama, plus 476. Jose Maria Olafabel still kicking it out there, plus 577 for him today. Freddie Couples shot plus eight and 80 today. And uh, your low finisher, Peter Malnati, plus 10. He shot an 82. But boy, Freddie still out there giving it at the Masters. Every year, I know it's, we're probably so far out of uh, a Freddie window of contention, but every year I'm just going to hope that he comes out firing. Has a good first round, and then we can all get behind uh, Freddie and his casual footwear and uh, hope that he does something on the weekend. But looks like he's probably not going to make the cut this time around. So, all right, that's it for the Zelmo Zipping Out of Town scoreboard. When we come back, we will have third period action coming your way. And that's it for that shredaway second period intermission report as well. We're tied at one. Alex Storjahan, shorthanded marker, has even this game up. 40 minutes into it, we are back with more in just a moment. This is River Dragons Hockey. Dragons Hockey. Good internet. Get upfront surprise free pricing with Wi-Fi modem included and no data caps. Plus bundle internet 300 with YouTube TV for just $92.99 per month for 12 months with auto pay and paperless billing. What? Tim Hortons has a new $6 breakfast bundle? With a mouth-watering breakfast sandwich, a golden hash brown with a small hotter iced coffee, and a classic donut made for your me time. Oh, and yours too. The $6 breakfast bundle.
Hi ho, hi ho, your gas is getting low, but you're in luck, pull your car or truck into Zelmo, Zelmo, Zelmo. This month at Zelmo's, all Celsius energy drinks, two for four dollars. But you're in luck, pull your car or truck into Zelmo, Zelmo, Zelmo. Always clean, always fast, always friendly. Zelmo Zip In, fueling life's passions for 20 years. Winter is upon us. We must prepare. Cold and darkness will spread across the land. The nights will be long. Hey, what are you guys doing? Air Force is here to fix the heat. Don't let winter leave you out in the cold. Call Air Force Heating and Air now for our special $79 AC gas furnace or heat pump tune-up. Only for a limited time. Air Force Heating and Air is always here for you. Here he comes, boys. Sure is beautiful. Here it is, boys. Who's ready to put it to work? Me. Me. There's only one way to settle this. Rock. Where'd he come from? I win. Never saw him coming. Must be the camo. Drive off in a new John Deere from SunSouth right now with 0% financing on select models. SunSouth, equipment for those that do. Third period action at the Winston-Salem Fairgrounds Arena. Tom Callahan here with you. It's the first of three in a row between these two teams. And the Thunderbirds and the River Dragons tied at one after one. Taking a look down to the penalty box right now. So Jay Krupp is in there ostensibly to serve the remainder of the major against Jamea for boarding a match penalty with 2.36 to go to start period number three. And then, of course, Moore finishing his fighting major. Farmer in the box. Keplinger is in the box, so his 10 will expire here in the third period, and he'll be able to come back. It's going to be an interesting finish to this hockey game. Third period action is brought to you by Kinetic Credit Union. Another fine sponsor here, River Dragons Hockey. And Columbus. Right now, getting ready to try to kill off the remainder of that match penalty. And again, Storjahan with a shorthanded goal at the end of the second period. Made it a 1-1 game. That's where we're at right now. And, and Columbus would certainly take another one of those if they could. Colgan down in the net to our left. River Dragons rolling left to right in the white road jerseys here to start period number three. Black shoulders, black elbow stripes, along with red and teal elbow stripes. The shoulder is outlined in teal. The main River Dragons crest on the front. Black numbers and letters, outlined in red and teal. Black pants and the white socks with the same striping as the elbows of the jerseys. We're underway. Bersani, Swan, Leighton, and Shinkarik out to start this kill for Columbus. Thunderbirds will move it in on the left side. Here's Boutita just in over the blue line. He'll cycle it around behind the net. Schnapp beaten to the puck by Leighton, who swings it around to the right point, but not out. Kept in there. Shinkarik behind the net after it. Poked away from him. Swan on the near side. Bank pass up to the left point. Pass to lock and down. Swan will stay up on the four check as it's chopped away from him. And Salak takes it all the way behind his own net. Thunderbirds looking to move through center. Picked off by Shinkarik. Second attempt bats it into the corner. Kramer up after it. Behind the net, here's Leighton on a rolling puck. He'll fire it down. 
147 to go on the match penalty. 1-1 tie here early in the third period. Now it's Petrantonio pushing in, shorthanded chance. Rolling puck, can't settle. Wraps it behind the net, fires it all the way down, back into his own end. Colgan will play it aside. Storjahan with it there, and now he'll fling it back down the ice. Kennedy wanted to wheel up the right side, but Storjahan closed him off quickly as it's fired in from center. Colgan can't slow it down. Bockwell ties up on the far side. It's Lahetka after it. He'll play it back around and down the ice again. 107 to go on the power play as Cavalieri leaves it behind the net. Columbus again will change up its penalty killers. Hunter out with Storjahan. Bockwell and Slahetka. Hunter at center, picks off the puck, turns back in. Shorthanded chance. Hunter with a shot and a right pad save. Cavalieri. Thunderbirds on the regroup here, 45 seconds to go, and then the River Dragons will come back to full strength. Getting all the way through this five-minute major would be absolutely massive. Game tied at one. Slahetka puts his man into the boards. Bockwell into the pile as well. And puck slowly moving along that Zamboni door. Sometimes a puck disappears under those Zamboni doors. I don't even know where it is. It's dug out now around to the left point. Clay Keeley on it, feeds it over to the right side. And now he gets it back on the left. Keeley, top of the circle, back across, one-time shot. Colgan to his left to make the save, and he holds on. Nine seconds left to go. And then the River Dragons will have killed this off. So let's see if Columbus can get, and now they do have Brian Moore back out of the box. After his fight, that means Farmer is also back for the Thunderbirds, but this is a big draw win if they can pull it off here, Bersani. Him with a face off, pushed it over to the wall. Shankarik is tied up over there by Pestuka. Salak over on the pile. Dug behind the net, pop off around after it. Pop off, will fire it off the boards and out of the box is Krupp. River Dragons kill it off and out of the attack. Here's Swan on the right side, driving wide. Sequoia Swan back ends it up top. Cleared away. Swan to the left point. Krupp holding it in there. He'll scoop it down. Swan in the cycle trying to feed Krupp in the slot. Couldn't get it to him. Thunderbirds back the other way. He's Kramer in over the line. Left shot. Pistuka into the slot. And again, the puck knocked away. Whalen will keep it in. It kicks right back up the slot. And Krupp, little backhand chip. Pop off following it up. Did get it ahead, but not too much further as it stumped right back in. Colgan way out to play it. He'll give it to Shinkarik. Shinkarik to the near side. And Brian Moore run into on the near side wall. Closed down by a couple of Thunderbirds. Leaning around to help out. Puck coughed up right side. Buchita with a shot. Right pad save Colgan. And now ahead comes Kyle Moore on the right side. In over the line with Hunter. Leaves it to him. Hunter into space for Brian Moore. Brian Moore back to Hunter. Passes a little behind him. Turn back and now three on two. Thunderbirds ahead. Here they come left side, and nice job by Slaheka to close his man down. Got the aid of the back check there, and the opportunity goes by the boards. Now Schnapp stole it back at center. Back in comes Butita. Butita into space, quick shot. Colgan left pad save. As he stops Nate Keeley's attempt from the hash marks. Kyle Moore with the feet ahead, deflected into the Thunderbirds end, and now Moore steals it back. Kyle Moore right side, driving behind the net, leaving on the backhand right up the slot, but that one is stolen away in front by Kramer. Coming up on four and a half minutes into this third period, the game tied at one. Slahetka, pass at center, picked off by the Thunderbirds. They'll dump it in. Bockwell, left side corner. Trying to move it up the boards, turned over in the slot. Petrantonio will backhand it away. And now it's tossed right back in. Around to the near side it goes. Bach will behind the net. Pass off the left side. Tipped down by Wickline. Boy, Brian Moore was out there for a while. Finally gets off the ice now. Storjahan back out. Petrantonio right side. In behind the net. Wickline trying to pop it in front. Salak on the far side. 
And he is pestered the whole way back. Popoff eventually comes up with it. Wickline moving it ahead, but turned over at center to Butita. 5.25 into the third. 1-1 one, one tie. Store Johanna Shorty in the second. Butita regular strength in the first. Salak in on the wall, had it taken away as he spun himself down to the ice. Wickline chipped it ahead. Salak lost his helmet on the play and has to head off the ice. Back up the left side. Here's Farmer in with a shot. Off a stick, it goes to the far glass. Puck free to Storjahan. He tries to turn it ahead. River Dragons have numbers. Bersani onto the right side. Krupp trying to catch up with it. Back in front for Bersani. That one is tipped behind the net. Around it rolls to the left side. Slaheka turning it back in from center. Columbus must tag. They do. Swan up on the four check here. Forcing the play out the near side. Spinning away from Swan. Behind the net over there is Whalen. Thunderbirds break through center. Butina on the right wing, swept off a stick. In behind the net, Leighton pushed it back to the corner. Slahetka on it. Slahetka, cross ice. Krupp had it slide under his stick. Whalen will drive it back in. Around it goes Slahetka on the left side again. This time he'll just flip it away to center. Thunderbirds in the middle of a change. They turn it over here at the line. Krupp bodies it back into the zone. Cleared out. Columbus sends it back in. Ryan Hunter up on the four check here. Across it comes, and out. Kramer in, and Kramer is met by a hip check behind the net. Shot in towards the goal, is knocked away by Colgan. More ahead and out. Here's Ryan Hunter up the right side. Hunter in with a shot off a leg and well out of play. 6.59 gone here in the third period. We are tied at one. Third period action is brought to you by Kinetic Credit Union. This is River Dragons Hockey. We're always going a million different directions. But Kinetic Credit Union makes it easy for all of us to stay connected, all in one place. With the Kinetic mobile app, we both can monitor our accounts on the go. We can create account alerts so we know when there's a change, apply for a loan or credit card. We can even open a new account. Plus, you can quickly pay bills, transfer money, or make a deposit anytime, anywhere. Kinetic makes our life a whole lot easier. Kinetic Credit Union, the energy for your dreams. At Beam, we take pride in being a part of our community, and we're committed to seeing it grow. We continually volunteer with organizations that are making a difference. Together, we are building a better community while building the best internet that exceeds the technology of metropolitan cities. But more importantly, one that connects us all. We want to ensure reliability, so for this reason, we're willing to go the extra mile. We aim to provide the community with high quality internet and cable services, because we live here too. Because at Beam, community is not just a place. It's the way we do business. Dragonsmerch.com Okay, so update for you as we come back here in this Kinetic Credit Union third period of play, and uh, I have been informed that the Match penalty has been changed back to a five-minute major in a game misconduct for Alexander Jemayev. So no supplemental discipline. It's still five in a, a game, and he is gone for the remainder. However, no match penalty. That does make a difference. Five on five. We're skating right now as a puck dumped in on Colgan. No icing. We are just past the seven-minute mark of this third period. Tied at one. Thunderbirds and the River Dragons and turned over in the zone here. But now Brian Moore back for it, steals it away. He pushes up with Kyle on his right side, tried to walk in over the line, offside. And that offside brought to you by Old School Barber Shop. They're online at Old School Barber, S H O P P E dot com. Are your sides a little off? Get lined up at Old School Barber Shop. You can book online anytime, also 24 7 through their Instagram and Facebook. Face off one back to center, and Shinkarik fires it in. Knocked down by the Thunderbirds and cleared right back out. Utina tips it on. Keplinger dumps it into the right side corner. We're back at it again here tomorrow night. Here in Carolina, Saturday night, final game of the River Dragons regular season. That is a 7.05 puck drop at the Columbus Civic Center. Come on down and join us. It's fan appreciation night. They're giving away everything from ice cream sandwiches to a giant 75-inch television. Come on down and join us. Thunderbirds with a puck up top, fed over the left side. Here's a chance by Farmer, deflected away in front of Colgan. Good traffic there by the Thunderbirds. Left side corner, Salak. Salak turning in the slot. 
Cutting to his right, his shot save. Colgan, rebound, Colgan again the save. Puck to the line, not out. Another drive in, Colgan to let Pat stop. Another chance, that one blocked by traffic. Puck finally comes out over the line. Back in come the River Dragons as they try to push in, but that one is knocked away by the Thunderbirds defense. Both teams working on a change here. Petrantonio out there along with Wickline and Storjahan now. Salak at the point. Puck tipped out to center. Petrantonio just bats it the other way. Glove down there by Bioni. He'll backhand it out of play into the River Dragons bench. And we will get a whistle here. 8.56 gone in the third. While we have a moment, let's take a break. Ten seconds along the network for station identification. Identification. You're listening, You're listening to River, to River Dragon 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 on WDCN HD Fort Moore, Fort Moore, Columbus, and W295858 Crystal Crystal Valley. Valley. 106.9 Real really Rocks. rocks. Face off just outside the Thunderbirds line. Pop off will feed it across. Here's Layton stepping up. Dumps it into the right side corner. Wick line after it. Petrantonio cuts that clear off. Puck free. Schnapp will step back to scoop it up. Feed around to the far side. And now moving it ahead at center. Here come the Thunderbirds up the far side. They'll work it in on goal. Colgan will hold. 9.23 into period number three. Game remains tied up at one. River Dragons hockey brought to you in part by BKI Accounting, a new age approach to old school accounting, specializing in payroll, bookkeeping, income, and sales taxes for small business. Learn more at bkiaccounting.com. Face off to the left of Colgan. Tied up on the dot, pushed towards the line. It's kept in, cutting across to his left by Clay Keeley. He'll feed it all the way around. Now ends up in the far corner. Slahetka ahead off Bersani. Still not out. Now Bersani able to dump it out of there. Thunderbirds quickly trying to reset here. Pass is turned back by Slahetka. At the line, it goes off Krupp. Carried in right side by Bersani. Flips it in on goal. Cavalieri will catch. And hold, eight seconds shy of the halfway mark of the third. A reminder that all Columbus River Dragons playoff games are on sale right now. You can still pick up the seven game pack with or without a credit rider. And to find out which option is best for you, give the River Dragons office a call, 706-507-GOAL. That's 507-4625. And also single game seats on sale right now through the Civic Center box office and online at Ticketmaster.com. River Dragons keep the puck in off the faceoff. Shot floats in. Ooh, deflected in front of Cavallari. Ends up near corner. Around to the right point, Shinkarik ripped it across, deflected out. Slaheka will dump it back in. Columbus tags up. Still offside. Now they're able to move in. Dumped in, a bouncer wide of the net. Colgan can't flag it down with a goal stick. Keplinger in the left side corner. In behind the net. Up towards the point. Moore pushing it ahead. Kyle Moore ahead at center trying to get around his man. And Well, let's see who's that one going to go on. It's a holding call. And looks like Cholek's going to go for impeding the progress of Kyle Moore. River Dragons to the power play when we come back halfway through this third period. There's more coming your way. Stay tuned. This is River Dragons Hockey. Even though I'm away at college, Kinetic Credit Union is still the best way for me to stay connected here and at home. With the Kinetic mobile app, I have control of my accounts wherever I go. I can easily transfer money between internal and external accounts, get money faster by setting up recurring transfers, and I can find the nearest ATM or branch right from my phone. Plus, I can add my Kinetic cards to my phone's digital wallet and enjoy quick, secure, contactless payments. By the way, Mom, I need some more money. Kinetic Credit Union, the energy for your dreams. Let's go! Woo! Set the tone. Kyle, tell your shoes, tell your shoes. Yeah, good job. Woo! Yeah. 
grab a Pepsi Wild Jerry and get wild. Even though I'm away at college, Back here, Columbus River Dragons hockey. Tom Callahan here with you. Face off coming up to the left of the Thunderbirds goal. Kyle Moore draws the penalty. It is a holding call against Cholek. 10-32. And the River Dragons back on the Law power play. The Law features live music every Friday and Saturday night. Show your River Dragons ticket stuff for a two-for-one deal on cover. Columbus still for two with a man advantage. As Shakira go over to the far side, Slaheka with a shot. That one is blocked. Bouncer to the left point. Slaheka will send it around the rim. Hunter out there also with Wickline, Krupp, and Shinkarik. Tied up on the right side corner. And it's cleared out by the Thunderbirds. Shinkarik will go all the way back for it. He'll skate it ahead. Pass onto the wing. Slaheka was in behind the D, but pass a little too hot to handle there. He'll swing it around to the right side. Here's Hunter. He's picked up immediately. Gets it back down now up top. Shinkarik over to the far dot. Slaheka back up top, but nowhere near on the pass there. Down it goes. So once again, Cole going to leave it aside. Shinkarik leaving it back. And now moving it ahead is Ryan Hunter. Hunter carries in, try to flip it in right side. Puck knocked down. He chases it down, though. Feeds it behind the net. Group around after it. Can't catch up with it. Cleared down. 45 seconds to go on the man advantage. Columbus will change up the power play unit as Petrantonio out. He'll leave it off into space. Bockwell, left side. Storjahan at center. Back to Petrantonio. Petrantonio steps in on the wall, but Kennedy cut it off. And cleared it back down the ice. 24 seconds to go on the power play for Columbus. Bockwell, rolling puck at center, has to slow it down. Feed it over to Moore, and Moore moves it in over the line. Kyle Moore into the right side corner for Storjahan. 10 seconds to go on the man advantage. Cleared again. And that'll do it. Cholek out of the box. River Dragons. Never really got pressure. Back in, Brian Moore, left side, carries wide. Sends it right up the slot. Puck is still sitting there. Schnapp took it out of danger. 7-16 to go into third, and now Schnapp will rush up the ice. In on the right wing with a shot right into the chest protector of Colgan. He holds, and here comes the pushing and shoving once again. At the side of the net. Linesman <laughs> having a rough ride right there. And Brendan Colgan is just drifting back and forth across the defensive zone. Brian Moore is clearly upset with Jacob Schnapp. Schnapp is going to be escorted to the penalty box. Kyle Moore is over there to yell at Schnapp. Twelve fifty one time of these penalties. And it looks like they will offset. At least that's what it appears right now. <laughs> Kyle Moore egging on the fans here, as is his want. <laughs> now he's just blowing kisses to everybody. Kyle Moore's a lover. He's not a fighter. He's not a fighter. He's a lover, not a fighter. Getting a lot of cowbells directed at him. <laughs> well, the crowd is fired up, that's for sure. They're still sorting this one out down there. It's 
Still no penalty times up on the board here and still a lot of explaining going on to the captains, Butita and Petra Antonio. And now Brian Moore is being sent off. And he was upset. He made a beeline to go over and give the ref a piece of his mind, but man, I don't know where that one came from. And that Josh Petrantonio is still there. Butita has left. So that means this is not good for the River Dragons if Petrantonio is still there arguing his point. So Brian Moore appears to have gotten himself an early seat. River Dragons are already down a man without Jamaif, who got five in a game for boarding. The bench keeps getting shorter for Columbus. And now another player comes in for the Thunderbirds. That's Whalen. There's still no time up on the clock for penalties. All right, so now we have with 7.09 to go into third, Schnapp has two minutes up on his side of the board. It's a River Dragons power play. We'll try to sort it all out later, but Columbus back to the man advantage. They're 0 for 3 on the loft power play. Let's hope they get a little more setup time here. It's fed to the left side. Here's Petrantonio at the dot. They'll feed it up top to Shinkarik. Left half wall, Petrantonio. Down low, jam play for Krupp, couldn't get it to go. Krupp on it, feeds it around, pass door to Hamm, but on the right half wall, Hunter waiting. Up top, and Carrick over to the far side. Petrantonio, quick shot, whipped wide. Rebound bounces around over the stick of Hunter, and that allows a clear for the Thunderbirds. He'll chop it down. Shin Carrick after it, a loop out the left side of his net. 1.22 to go in the River Dragons power play. And they dump it in, but turn it over. Puck to the line. Hunter couldn't keep it in as it bounces out. Petrantonio turning with it to Shinkarik, but Nate Keeley right there knocked it away into the corner. And that one was telegraphed all day long. Keeley now just running some clock out. Petrantonio finally gets it back. Moves it ahead here. Storjahan right side to Krupp. Group in over the line, looking in front, feeds it. High slot to Hunter. Now to the left points, Laheka. His high shot missed the net. Around it bounces to the near side. 43 seconds of the power play. Puck on the right side corner. Krupp to Hunter. Hunter up top to Slahetka. To Hunter, cross ice. Petrantonio has to take it off the dasher. A bouncer jams it side of the net. Krupp on it. Try to feed it up top. Put it right into Kennedy. Kennedy behind the net. Pestered back there. Lost it to Krupp. Krupp. Tied up, Kennedy stole it back. Backhands it along, Salak clears. 15 seconds to go on the man advantage in Columbus time for one more rush. Right side, here's Wickline, moving it in over the line. Wickline, high slot, in with a shot, Layton, save, rebound, they score! Hunter Bersani on the doorstep! It's a power play goal for the River Dragons with 5-11 to go in the third, and Columbus takes a 2-1 lead. Boy, we have not seen Mario Cavallari give up many rebounds tonight, but that one was a big one. Layton will pick up the primary assist on the goal as he got that shot through. And Bersani, Johnny on the spot to put it away, and it's 2-1. Boy, Columbus has just hung in there and hung in there. It's almost felt like a bit of a rope-a-dope at times from the River Dragons. But somehow they find themselves leading. 
And now here's Wickline pushing up on the left side, moving the puck around behind the net. In the Thunderbirds end, but Carolina clears to center. Leighton on it, he'll fling it back in. And Columbus again tagging up to move up on the four check. On the right side, Keplinger at center. In over the line, stops, tries to feed it across, coughs it up. Petrantonio the other way, gives it to Wickline. Back to Petrantonio. And wrist shot tipped way out of play. 4.31 to go in the third. We'll take our final break of this Kinetic Credit Union third period and come back with more in just a moment. This is River Dragons Hockey. We all dream, but dreams quickly become distant memories unless we do something about it. Do everything in our power to learn to lead. At Troy University, we teach everyone to be leaders in their field. We're dedicated to teaching a new generation to lead change. I'm always on the go. But with the Kinetic Credit Union app, Kinetic is always with me. The Kinetic mobile app is virtual banking at its best. With the Kinetic mobile app, I can easily send and receive money, make a deposit, pay some bills, and I can even open up a new account all from my phone. And I can monitor all my accounts in one place, all on the go. The Kinetic mobile app, energized banking at its best. Kinetic Credit Union, the energy for your dreams. All right, we are back here on Columbus River Dragons Hockey. Schnapp has had to go back into the box. He actually ended up picking up two minors, roughing and high sticking. So Kyle Moore is out of the box for his two minutes of roughing. River Dragons did score on the power play. They lead it 2-1, 4.31 to go here in the third period. Faceoff will be to the left of Mario Cavallari. And it's pushed right towards the net and out wide the other side. Here's Moore wrapping it around to the left point. We're down to just one more now. River Dragons didn't keep it on side. Out it goes. Bach will shake in his head, but whistle goes. That offside brought to you by Old School Barber Shop. They are online at oldschoolbarbershopp.com. Your side's a little off. Get lined up today at Old School Barber Shop. Book online anytime and 24-7 through their Instagram and Facebook. Reservations highly recommended. Fired in from center by Bachwell into the near side corner. Firth watched by Moore behind the net. Comes back around to the near side. Thunderbirds, 4-13 and counting to go into third. River Dragons would love to be able to hang on to this one goal lead, but let's see. Columbus needs to play some D here now. You know the Thunderbirds are going to bring it. Kramer does bring it into the left side. Oh, boy, a dangerous hit there. Not a hard hit, but a dangerous hit. Pop off, shoves Kramer down in the corner. And that, this is more the way Kramer went into the boards. I don't think Pop off meant anything by it. I don't think he was trying to hurt him at all, but just he was just far enough away from the wall. And honestly, Kramer was not that strong on his skates in that position, so he got knocked down into the corner. But Pop off will pick up a penalty here. And if they're putting them out already, that was that was pretty quick. 3.58 to go here in the third period. So 16.02 time of the penalty. Again, I, I don't think Pops meant anything by that. He's you know, followed through on a hit there, and it was just awkward. Kramer was not in a good position to be hit, which is what makes it a dangerous hit. Wasn't in a strong position on his skates. Gets knocked into the boards from behind there. He's all right, he's up on his skates now. Bringing out the left arm a little bit, but he'll be fine. And they're actually gonna Pull Kramer off to the dressing room here. The trainer, Kramer wanted to go back to the bench, and the trainer's like, no, you're coming off with me. So he's off towards the locker room area here. So five minutes up on the board for Popoff with 3.58 to go here 
in the third. River Dragons up 2-1. Columbus has already killed off one five-minute major against. Now they have another one to get through. But the league's best penalty kill has responded in this game. So now the Thunderbirds, 0 for 3 with a man advantage. This is their fourth chance. Columbus is 0 for 4 in the power play. So both penalty kills have really done their job here tonight. Or pardon me, Columbus is 1 for 4 in the power play. Bersani's goal was a power play goal. Three seconds left in the power play. So five minutes for boarding. But they did not announce a game misconduct, so just a boarding major there. Butina on the left side as the Thunderbirds come in, and they'll try to set things up here now. Up to the left point here, Salak. Salak into the left side corner, Butita. Butita wanted to get it in front, knocked away behind the net. Around to the right side it goes. The River Dragons bench continues to get shorter. Left half wall here, Salak. Salak pressured at the line by Swan. Curls back down the left side wall. Boutique to left corner. Left half wall, Salak. Middle of the blue line, and it comes out over the line. Pastuka could not keep it in. 3.07 to go in regulation. River Dragons will be shorthanded for the rest of regulation, so we're just going to tell you about the regulation time. Columbus trying to kill off this five-minute major. Here's Butita in. River Dragons with a 2-1 lead. Nice job by Petrantonio to outbattle Butita and send the puck down the ice. 2.48 to go in the third period. Now we will keep an eye on Cavallari. I will say this, keep in mind if the Thunderbirds pull them, the River Dragons have unlimited shots at the empty net because they're shorthanded. So no fear of icing. Columbus will push it ahead and now on the right wing, here's a feed ahead for Petrantonio. He'll tee up, no fakes. And now he'll just try to eat some time on the wall, feed it back towards Lajeca. Lajeca dumps it back in as Petrantonio clears. Just chew those extra few precious seconds. Right side moving in is Farmer. Farmer tried to center, hit Storjahan off his skates. It goes out of play. 2.15 to go in the third. River Dragons will be short the rest of the way here. 2-1 Columbus in the lead. Boy, it's a nail biter here down the rest of the way in this Kinetic Credit Union third period. And we're going to get a timeout called here. Carolina will bring the players in. So the question is a little over two minutes left. I think it's a little early to get Cavalieri out of there, especially with a one-goal deficit. If it were two, maybe, but probably too early with a one-goal deficit. And now the River Dragons, who have that 2-1 lead up on the board, just trying to get their penalty killers rested. The penalty kill's done an excellent job in this game. Again, Columbus's PK has, has done a fantastic job. Brendan Colgan has given the River Dragons some pretty big saves when he's needed to. Columbus has done a stifling job, though, against this Thunderbirds power play tonight. They just need to keep it up for the next, well, slightly over two minutes. So I would expect Cavallari, who uh, does not look like he's coming off. Or is he? Let's see. He's just still standing at the blue line. Cavallari coming off. They are going to pull Cavallari off. All right. Six on four. River Dragons do have the unlimited shots at that empty net. Boy, this is a huge faceoff right here. And it's one back by the Thunderbirds. They'll control. Here's Salak at the left point with it. Left side for Schnapp. Schnapp trying to move it in front. It comes up to the right point. Pastuka shot. He missed the net. Around it goes. Salak pressured in the corner. Bach will on him. Slaheka, pardon me. Butina. Bach will knock it away to the far side. Clay Keeley had it chopped off his stick towards the line. Keplinger keeping it in on the right side up top. Pastuka to the near dot. Salak with a shot, and that's blocked by the shin pads of Slaheka. Can't clear it out, though. It's Pastuka, Salak, 137 to go in regulation. There's a shot tipped into the corner. After it is Bockwell. Ramps it around. He gets it down the ice. Columbus will change up the penalty killers. 
And now Schnapp and Bach will tie it up right at the bench. Bockwell was trying to get off the ice. Schnapp was at the entry to the bench. I think they're going to take them both. Or are they just going to take Bockwell? Are they, are they seriously just taking Bockwell? Wow. 120 to go, and it's going to be six on three. I don't know how you make that call in this kind of game. So it starts with a draw win and a clear by the River Dragons. The net is empty for Carolina. It's 2-1 Columbus, and it is six on three for the rest of regulation. 105 to go. Salak in the left side corner. He'll feed it around. Puck ends up up top, over for the one-time shot, save, Colgan. And the rebound behind the net, Salak on it, to the near dot, Schnapp blocks in front, feeds it back door, they score, because of course they do. On an absolutely terrible garbage call, where Bockwell and Schnapp both should have went. Absolute garbage call. Tied it to 49.4 to go, and the referee's completely responsible for that. Bockwell's just been thrown out of the game. I think Shakarik, maybe it's Shakarik getting thrown out. Schnapp just stood there in the doorway. Bockwell couldn't get off. Yep. And mind you, the game's only tied. But Columbus now loses another player. By the way, it is a Thunderbirds power play goal. Nineteen ten, time of the marker. River Dragons will. Throw it down the ice. So now the Thunderbirds, if we're going into overtime, would still have about a minute of power play time in the OT. <laughs> Left side here, Salak on the wall. Bockle trying to clear, Storgahan will fire it down. Keplinger with the goal. 13 seconds to go. Looks like we're probably headed for some overtime here. Dumped into the left side corner. Slack after it. He fans on a clearing attempt. Just try to run that clock out, and they do. Overtime it is. So overtime with 102 left in the major against Popov. Assists on the goal, going to Schnapp and Firth. One oh two left in the major, tied at two, heading into overtime here.
Carolina will be four on three in a power play, and now Schnapp is being escorted out. Now Jay Krupp steps out onto the ice trying to figure out what's going on. Now the ref comes over. I don't think he really wants to talk to Jerome Bichard. But they have to get somebody into the box, I think, is the idea to serve the rest of Popoff's major here with 102. So they just announced Schnapp's game misconduct. And I didn't hear what that was for. Uh, derogatory language, taunts, or slurs. Game misconduct for, for Schnapp. So that's an interesting one. I don't think I've ever actually heard that one, at least in the FPHL. But so that's what Schnapp got it for. All right, so four on three into overtime. It is sudden death. Swan breaks his stick right off the faceoff. They're taking a minute to get him a twig. Hurry up. Keplinger will bring it back in on the right side. Fed around to the left point, and Pastuk at the line does keep it in. Gets it back up top. Slock on the near side. By the way, it's Kyle Moore serving the remainder of the major here for Popoff over Pastuka one time, and that one hits the lock and was deflected wide. Pastuka at the left point. His shot missed the net. Around to the right side. Here's Keplinger on it. 25 seconds to go in the major. 420 left on that clock here in the overtime. Tied at two. Up top. There's a shot blocked off a of D-man. Rebound to the side of the net. Shot behind. And Clay Keeley in the left side corner. Up top, Pastuka. Pastuka. Keeley. Keeley. Wraps it around behind the net to the far side, up to the right point. Keplinger over one time. Pastuka shot and getting a piece of the blocker was Colgan as it's cleared out and down the ice by Slahetka. No icing here. Cavalier out to play it away from Kyle Moore. We're back to four on four until the next whistle. 3.45 left to go in the overtime, tied at two. Hunter will pick it up. Leighton and Petrantonio out there right now. Here comes Leighton. The rookie up the left side. He'll dump it in from center. Around the right wing rim it comes. Ryan Hunter over there trying to pull it down. Kyle Moore, right wing. Tied up on the half wall. And now Carolina trying to move it the other way. At center is Kennedy. Kennedy bumped, maintains the puck, steps in over the line. Got through another check. Puck into the left side corner. Late and after it, Petrantonio trying to help him. Tied up on the far side. Carried back out to center by Nate Keeley. He'll try to turn back into the right side. Keeley in on the wall. Storjahan turned away Bockwell. Bockwell will flip it across to Kyle Moore. Moore pulls it back down, gives it to Bockwell, but it goes off his skate, and now it's cleared away to center. 2.44 to go here in the overtime, tied at two. Left side moving in, the centering feed from Farmer. That one got through, fed up top, not out. Firth holds it, left point, Bioni. On to the left wing, centering feed by Keeley. Blocked away in front by Slahetka, who will pull it out of the pile, go behind the net. And he'll move it up the left wing. Storjahan attacking with Wickline. Here's Storjahan in over the line, trying to walk it in front. He's rubbed down on the wall, knocked down. Back the other way come the Thunderbirds. Up the left side, Bioni leaving it off into space at center. Keeley at the line, lost it there. Storjahan back on it. He'll look ahead. Wick line there. Storjahan, a little slow getting to the bench there. I don't know if that hit hurt him or not, but maybe winded him a little. Puck at center. Here's Ryan Hunter up by himself. He's going to curl back and wait for help. We have played a lot of four-on-four four here. As uh, it was four-on-three with the end of the power play here in to start the overtime. We're still tied at two, but we haven't had a whistle. Columbus playing it ahead. Here's Ryan Hunter moving it back. Petrantonio bank pass right wing side to Kyle Moore. Moore and over the line, cutting it on goal, shot and a glove save, Cavalieri. 
Great stop by Mario Cavallari in the overtime to keep us tied up at two. Face off will be coming up to the left of Cavallari and he and Moore go over to talk to one another. Colgan's having a pad issue, so we're gonna get a quick respite here while he fixes that. Fink Soff will be coming back to the left eventually of the, <laughs> of the Carolina net. Kyle Moore messing around with Keplinger over there, just faked like he was going to hit of it. Keplinger's just laughing at him. You know, it's, it's funny. Like the fans, especially the ones in front of us this evening, take it very seriously. And, uh, I, and I know our fans take it very seriously too, but and sometimes you got to remember these are grown men playing a game. And when the game's over, yeah, you want to beat each other's face off while you're playing the actual game. But, you know, at the end of it all, I mean, these guys, they know each other. Some of them train together in the offseason. Some of them have been friends for longer than you would realize. And, yeah, there's, there's some animosity out there. There's some hate. The two teams don't like each other. And while the game's going on between the whistles, absolutely. It is everything you can do to get an edge and try to win that hockey game, but. You've got, uh, again, just some, some particularly fired up fans in front of us here who just, I think forget that sometimes. Okay, so now we're back to three on three for the remainder of the OT. 131 to go in overtime, tied at two. And it is more. Hunter and Petrantonio. Petrantonio stationed as the defenseman here in this setup. Kennedy will end up with the puck behind the Thunderbirds net. Kennedy Keplinger Firth out there for the Thunderbirds. And here's Firth up the left side. In over the line, Firth wide of the wing, gave it, gave it up. Kyle Moore ends up with it. He'll take his time now and reset. As Moore will leave it off. Oop, nobody went for it. Petrantonio over for it. Let's not get too fancy here, boys. Petrantonio over to Moore as he's knocked down in behind the play, but ahead comes Hunter. Hunter up on the left side. Curls waiting for a little bit of help. Try to feed it up top. Hit Keplinger in the skate. Came back to Hunter. Hunter is tied up. Moore tried to pull it out of the pile. Puck comes to the point, and Hunter's going to take it back out. Head to the bench. Petrantonio has Storjahan out there, gets it ahead to Hunter. Storjahan going to the net. Hunter dancing down the right side, cutting in front, and his shot is hooked wide off the blade of the stick. 24 seconds ago here in the OT. Puck fed back out to center as Hunter knocked down. Slaheka's going to take it all the way back into his own end. River Dragons have the hammer here. Time for one more rush. Slaheka left side. Storjahan in over the line. Try to push it into the left wing corner. Eight seconds to go in overtime. Storage on to the left wing corner. Pulling it out up top. River Dragons looking for a chance here. Slaheka pass behind him by Wickline, and that's it. We're going to a shootout. That might be one of the more anticlimactic ends to an OT we've seen in a while. So 2-2. Two, two. And several players out for the River Dragons. Shinkarik is gone. Jemayev is gone. Ryan Moore is gone. Jordan Popoff is gone. All of them with a combination of misconducts and or majors. And Jacob Schnapp is out for the Thunderbirds. So we'll see, and it's best of three, round by round. If we don't have a winner after that, we will then go. So it's best of three, so each team will get their chance to shoot. But after that, it goes round by round. So, okay, to start off this shootout, River Dragons are up first, and it's going to be Storjahan out to shoot first for Columbus. Cavalier is set in the Thunderbirds net. Storjahan, the whistle goes. He'll pick the puck up at center. The left-hand shot. Weaving right down the middle of the ice. Walking it on goal. Shoots off the goal post. 
Storjahan hits the pipe. And now it's going to be Keplinger out to shoot for the Thunderbirds. He'll generate some speed as he comes in. Colgan comes way out to greet him as he weaves wide to the left. Keplinger drifting to his right and on goal and he scores. Keplinger cuts forehand to backhand around Colgan. And after one round, it's 1-0. Carolina in the lead. So now it's Ryan Hunter out to shoot for the River Dragons. Hunter up the left side. He'll bring it in, cutting in on goal. Shoots and he scores. Hunter puts that one away and ties this shootout up at one. So now to the bottom of round two we go. And it's going to be Pastuka going in very slowly. Fakes a slapper, goes in and a right pad save. Colgan. As Pastuka tried to find some daylight there underneath that right pad, but Colgan shut it down. So now it's Kyle Moore, perennial favorite here with the Thunderbirds fans. And he will come up the middle, weave to his right now. Moore with the puck. Really taking his time, stick handling in, looking in on goal, still slow into the backhand, and I think he lost it there. Moore never really getting a shot away. So now it's Jan Salak with a chance to win it for the Thunderbirds. Salak. Generating some speed a little bit over the line to the slot in with the shot, and he missed the net. Okay, so best of three solved nothing. Now it is round by round. Jay Krupp out to shoot for Columbus to try to give him the lead. Krupp to his left, moving in quickly. Stick handles deep, shoots, and he shut down by the left pad of Cavalieri. Is Cavalieri okay? That's the question. He's a little slow to get up. I think Cavalieri hurt himself. Cavalieri's hurt. Chance to win it here for the Thunderbirds. Kennedy, he'll move in. Deeks with the backhand, and he's shut down by Colgan. But my question is now, does Cavalieri keep going in this shootout? They are going to probably go to Karpinski here. I think Cavalieri hurt himself going to his left. And your immediate thought as a goaltender when something like that happens is hip, knee, and groin. So now, boy, that's, oof, that's potentially really bad news. Like just beyond this game, potentially really bad news for Carolina. Their trainer out to look at him. Boy, oh boy, Karpinski's going to come out and stretch out, and I'm sure he's coming in the game at this point. How about getting dropped into that pressure cooker? Fifth round of a shootout. Stretch it out, kid. Well, Cavalieri looks like he's going to try to stay in the game. Honestly, I don't know if I'd let him. If I, was, if I was the coach, just thinking a little further down the line. But anyway, Josh Petrantonio out to shoot. Fifth round, Petrantonio walks in, shoots, and he scores! Cavallari got a piece of it, but not all of it. It hit the heel of his right skate and kept rolling and made it across the line. So now a save from Brendan Colgan and the River Dragons could skate out with a win. So now out to shoot is Chris Cholek. One of the newest Thunderbirds. He'll go way wide to his right. Brings it to the dot, still with it. Shoots and he missed the net. 
Game over, River Dragons win. Columbus wins it in a five round shootout, 3-2 over the Carolina Thunderbirds. Well, what a way to start this best of three series. Well, not best of three, three and three, I should say. This is not the playoffs, but man, did it feel like a playoff game in here tonight between these two teams who potentially know they may cross paths again in about three weeks. Thunderbirds salute the fans and head on off the ice here. 3-2 River Dragons win it in a shootout. It's time for our Pepsi postgame show. We're back at the three stars of the game. A final look back at the out-of-town scoreboard. Scoring wrap and more coming your way. Stay tuned. This is Columbus River Dragons hockey. Six nine, ooh she fine. Hoping she can sing it to me one more time. Get low, get low, get low, get low. To the window, to the window, to the wild, to the wild. Grab a Pepsi Wild Jerry and get wild. Jack Houston Memorial Hospital, our focus is you. Even though we performed more than 1,300 joint replacements last year, we treat you like you are our only patient. Your surgeon explains your joint replacement, so nothing is a surprise. Our team knows your treatment plan and we work together to get you back on your feet again. That's why our hospital is recognized year after year as a leader in patient satisfaction and quality of care. Jack Houston Memorial Hospital, excellence always. Wade Cleaners, Wade Cleaners, the official cleaners of Scorch and Torch. Three stars picked by the local media here this evening. And your three stars, actually a River Dragon sweep on the road. How about that? I, uh, all right, well, third star is listed as Hunter Bersani, who had the game at the time go-ahead goal at 1449 for the River Dragons. Second star, Brendan Colgan. And uh, I'll tell you what, Colgs tonight, great job in the shootout especially. Uh, but for the River Dragons, gave them the saves that they needed. And that's what you need out of your goaltender if you're going to win. And uh, he did a good job of that tonight. Josh Petrantonio ends up as the game's first star with the shootout winning goal. And Columbus skates out with the 3-2 win in the shootout here tonight. And for the River Dragons, they pick up two points here in the standings, get the victory. And, you know, we're coming back at it again tomorrow night. So nothing, absolutely nothing was settled here tonight. But, uh, boy, what a way to start off this 3-3 three and three between these two hockey teams. So there are your three stars of the game brought to you by Wade Cleaners. We'll take another break in the Pepsi postgame show. When we come back, we'll have that scoring wrap for you. And the out-of-town scoreboard, this is Columbus River Dragons Hockey. We all dream. But dreams quickly become distant memories unless we do something about it do everything in our power to learn to lead. At Troy University, we teach everyone to be leaders in their field. We're dedicated to teaching a new generation to lead change.
We're always going a million different directions. But Kinetic Credit Union makes it easy for all of us to stay connected, all in one place. With the Kinetic mobile app, we both can monitor our accounts on the go. We can create account alerts so we know when there's a change, apply for a loan or credit card, we can even open a new account. Plus, you can quickly pay bills, transfer money, or make a deposit anytime, anywhere. Kinetic makes our life a whole lot easier. Kinetic Credit Union, the energy for your dreams. What? Tim Hortons has a new $6 breakfast bundle? With a mouth-watering breakfast sandwich, a golden hash brown with a small hotter iced coffee, and a classic donut made for your me time. Oh, and yours too. The $6 breakfast bundle. Just the two of us. We can make it if we try. Just the two of us. Just the two of us. Get two entrees and an appetizer for $25 only at Applebee's. and our new 64 slice CT scanner. Cutting edge imaging that's available at both locations. For over 30 years, patient comfort, lower costs, and uncompromising dedication remain our top priority. Clearer results for a more accurate diagnosis. Columbus Diagnostic Center and CDC Northside. Technology with a human touch. Trojan fans, your back-to-back -back Sunbelt Championship winning football program is ready to defend their championship in 2024. To celebrate, you can snag a little blink yourself by purchasing your 2024 Trojan football season tickets. All fans that get season tickets by May 3rd receive a replica 2023 Sunbelt Championship ring. Get your season tickets now at TroyTrojans.com slash ticket. Back to bed once again in 2024. All right, we're back here in the Pepsi Post Game Show. Tom Callahan here with you. Let's go back through the scoring for you. Believe it or not, for everything that happened in this game, it's a good thing I don't do a penalty summary. We'd be here all night. But in a goal-scoring summary, I only have four to tell you about. And this game went all the way through regulation and into a shootout. We'll get to that. But we have to rewind all the way back to the first period where at the 7-0-1 mark, the Carolina Thunderbirds Took the early lead in this one. John Butita with the goal and assist by Dawson Baker as Butita comes streaking off the bench on a line change. He scores to make it 1 0 after one. In the second period, the River Dragons rally late while killing off one of two five minute majors against that they killed off tonight. This one was Jamea Faw for boarding. But Columbus, a shorthanded marker, Storjahan. And it still says from Slahetka and Hunter. I thought perhaps Shinkarik featured in on that goal, but right now uh, it's Slahetka and Hunter. The first shot, which I thought was Shinkarik, was blocked uh, by one of the Thunderbirds players who stayed down on the ice. The puck caromed right over to uh, Storjahan, and Storjahan beat the goaltender Cavalieri with a shot with just over six seconds remaining in the frame. River Dragons tied up at one before the end of the second. Then in the third period, the two teams are trade goals. At 14-49, Hunter Bersani gives the River Dragons the lead, a power play marker. Shot comes through from Slahetka. Rebound, which we don't see very often off Cavalieri, but the rebound was there for him. And he puts it away. Layton also an assist on the goal, 2-1 River Dragons. But then late, Columbus was down six on three after Popoff got a five-minute major for boarding. And then... A roughing minor against Bockwell. So the River Dragons were down six on three late in the game. And that power play goal at 19-10 scored by Keplinger with assists going to Schnapp and Tucker Firth. That pushed us into overtime where the major power play continued for just a little over a minute. But the River Dragons able to kill it off. And then the River Dragons, we played a lot of four on four there. And in the final minute or so, Columbus had some chances but just could not find a way to put the puck in the net. On to a shootout we go. That shootout lasts five rounds. The two teams trade goals through the first three rounds. Ryan Hunter, the only goal scorer for the River Dragons. Keplinger, the only goal scorer for the Thunderbirds. Round four, both teams miss. And in round five, it's the captain, Josh Petrantonio who puts the puck in off the right skate of the goaltender Cavalaria, continues on through the five hole over the goal line, and then with a last ditch attempt, Chris Cholek misses the net on a deke move, and the River Dragons 
take the victory. 3-2 your final here tonight. That's your scoring wrap-up. We'll take one more break. Come back with a look back at the out-of-town scoreboard. Brought to you by Zelmo Zippin. Stay tuned. More coming your way. River Dragons win it 3-2. This is the Pepsi Post Game Show. Rum dum dum. Get low. Get low. Get low. Three six nine. Ooh, she fine. Hoping she can sing it to me one more time. Get low. Get low. Get low. Get low. To the window. To the window. To the wall. To the wall. Grab a Pepsi Wild Jerry and get wild. At Jack Houston Memorial Hospital, our focus is you. Even though we performed more than 1,300 joint replacements last year, we treat you like you are our only patient. Your surgeon explains your joint replacement, so nothing is a surprise. Our team knows your treatment plan and we work together to get you back on your feet again. That's why our hospital is recognized year after year as a leader in patient satisfaction and quality of care. Jack Houston Memorial Hospital, excellence always. A hand here with you. I want to welcome all of our YouTube viewers back as well as those on 106.9. Really rocks. Columbus's real rock station. River Dragons win it tonight in a shootout. 3-2 your final. Columbus takes the victory. We're back at it again tomorrow night right here at 7.35 p.m. Eastern Time. 7 o'clock for that pregame show brought to you by Air Force Heating and Air. All right, final look back at the out-of-town scoreboard. Zelmo's Zippin has been fueling life's passion since 1999. Right now, late in the third at the Raising Canes River Center, Baton Rouge with a 3-2 lead over the Mississippi Seawolves. So how about that? Baton Rouge trying to squeeze out a couple more wins before the end of the regular season as they will not be making the playoffs this year. NHL Finals from earlier tonight. Sabres 4-2 over the Capitals. Panthers blank the Blue Jackets 4-0. Flyers top the Rangers 4-1 and keep their slim wild card hopes alive. Penguins win it in overtime over the Red Wings 6-5. Senators in a shootout, 3-2 over the Lightning. Devils, 6-5, top the Maple Leafs. In overtime, Islanders, 3-2 over the Canadians. Jets blank the Stars, 3-0. At the first intermission, Sharks and Kraken tied at 1. And in the first, Kings, 1-0 over the Flames. Major League Baseball, two postponements. Twins at Tigers, Brewers at Reds. Everything else final. Mets, 16-4 over the Braves. Royals 13-3 beat the Astros. Athletics hold off the Rangers 1-0. Phillies 5-1 over the Pirates. And the Orioles in 10 innings beat the Red Sox 9-4. And at the Masters, round one will resume tomorrow. But your leader in the clubhouse, Bryson DeChambeau, with a 7-under 65. Scotty Scheffler, 6-under 66 in second place right behind him. All right, well, that'll do it for us here tonight. So I want to say thanks to my intrepid producer, Colin Stephen Drew, getting us through this one, Drew Pierce. And uh, my thanks to everybody. We're going to do it again tomorrow because we had so much fun tonight. We're going to have a good time tomorrow and do it all again. I just wonder who's going to be left for the River Dragons and the Thunderbirds by the time we get to tomorrow's game. So, whew, dropping like flies in this one. But the River Dragons win it 3-2 in a shootout. Thanks for joining us, everybody. This has been the Pepsi Post Game Show. This is Tom Callahan saying good night. And saying good night. Thank you for being a part of Columbus River Dragons hockey. This game was brought to you in part by Pepsi, the official soft drink of the Columbus River Dragons. Zelmo Zip In, the official fuel provider of the River Dragons. Air Force Heating and Air, the official heating and air company of the River Dragons. Country Inn and Suites, the official host hotel of the River Dragons. And by Chick-fil-A Midland, 
Tim Hortons, Columbus Diagnostic, Shredaway, The Overby Company, Vector Ply, Trivioli's, The Jersey Shop, Beam TV, WYBU Christian Television Network, Troy University, Largeman Dental, BKI Accounting, The Optical Shop, Piggly Wiggly, Sun South John Deere, Wade Cleaners, Houston Clinic, Amber Crombie Bonding, First Franklin Financial, and Old School Barber Shop. This has been a presentation of Ignite Sports and Entertainment. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or any other use is prohibited without the express written consent of Ignite Sports and Entertainment and the Columbus River Dragons. This has been a presentation of the Columbus River Dragons.